Hello, everybody listening. I know most of you are probably out there freezing your asses in this sub-zero degree weather. And we can all thank Sub-Zero himself for that kind of weather, because if you've seen the gifts, you know he's behind it. But me and Chef here, cozying in on a nice, somewhat normal, 50, 60 degree weather here on the West Coast. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, we needed a voice. We've said it for a long time. The West Coast did not have the proper representation of what they needed to say on Test Your Might or elsewise. So me and Chef, we finally decided, you know what? It's time. It's time. It's West Coast time. And here we are. We're doing this little thing. We're calling it the West Coast War Zone. I'm King Hippo, and with me is our gracious host, Wonder Chef. Hello. So, um, first things first, you know, before anyone wants to, you know, go after the things we say, I'm gonna st- we're going to establish a little, this is a little bit of our background, so you understand where we're coming from. We're not totally full of shit. <laughs> I, I started playing fighting games, you know, when I was a kid. I was never very good at them, ever, but I just was intrigued by them. I always really liked Street Fighter just because of the characters, and I thought it was goofy. And uh, the, the, the fighter, funny enough, that I took seriously, and I started learning these terms, like these kind of like <laughs> insider terms. You know, you read tips and tricks, and you see all these terms, was uh, Smash Brothers Melee. And that was when I first learned, you know, like these advanced techniques, like, you know, oh, it's, and it, you know, that's when I stopped using, like, oh, you're, you're cheating, you know, you. You play Marth or whatever, you're cheating. Spamming. You're spamming, right. You're spamming that goddamn, you know, neutral jump A or whatever it was. So I, that was the first game I kind of learned these advanced techniques. And then it wasn't until, like, I got Street Fighter, what was it, the Anniversary Collection that came out on PS2 or Xbox. And then, or no, it's a Capcom Classics. Capcom Classics Collection had the Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo with that tutorial like that David Serlin tutorial had like beginner, intermediate, advanced. Mm-hmm. That was when I learned all those terms like negative edge and controlling space and all those other things like that. And I was really intrigued by it. I thought it was really interesting. So I was playing Super Turbo and then um, when I heard HDR was coming out, I leapt right on that. So HDR was the first game I kind of took, you know, pretty seriously. I I went to some um, local events for it. Like a few here and there, like at comic book shops, and then Street Fighter Four. You know, I was all in from there. So I followed Street Fighter Four. I followed Marvel. I followed, you know, all the fighting games that came out. MK, I I enjoyed. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was easy to pick up and play, which I liked. And it didn't have, you know, it was just a new game. I really liked Mortal Kombat ever since I was a kid. You know, it's just a really fun new game to dig into. Um, it kind of lost its luster, I think, over time and. By the time Injustice rolled around, I was really ready for something new, and I actually liked Injustice. You know, I you know I felt like everybody else. Like I thought it was dumb when it came out, but you know it had its it had its good parts, and I think now it's kind of settled and it's a pretty decent game now. I enjoy playing it. So yeah, I have a nice nice little background. I think starting in Street Fighter, but now I'm up in Injustice. Chef, what about you? Where are you? Yeah, well, um, I'm also I'm actually uh, newer to fighting games than you are, but um. <clears throat> I guess it's it's been a while. I used to, uh, I started my whole competitive gaming thing with like strategy games, so like, uh, you know, like board games and card games and stuff. And uh, right, yeah, yeah. But uh, I worked over in uh, the little Tokyo, the Japan town over here, and uh, there was an arcade, and they got one of the early cabs for Street Fighter Four, and uh, basically the game that I was playing at the time, the strategy game, it had just died out, and so I was going there uh, in between, uh, like on breaks and stuff, and I was playing Street Fighter 4, and I was like, you know, this is kind of fun, and, you know, I started looking up some stuff, and a few of my friends really like Blaze Blue, which was coming out at the time, and so I just yeah. started to play, and I don't know, man, it just, it, I got addicted, I remember one of the first times I played the game, I sat down, and I spent $20, because I, I was so like, I was like, dude, I can't believe I lost to that guy, I'm gonna do it again, I'm going again, and, uh, yeah, so I just, you know, I, I, obviously I'm in a good place for Street Fighter, so, I, you know, I played Street Fighter here, a long time, years, uh, Street Fighter 4 for years, you know, played with a lot of good players uh, back before they were known, and, uh, I, you know, I wasn't that good, it was my first fighting game, but, uh, you know, I got I got better over time, I wasn't bad at all, and, you know, I moved to other games, I played uh, I played Marvel for a while, I was pretty good, but uh, I dropped it when MK came out, uh, just because I was concentrating on MK, and, uh, you know, that's where I first sort of started getting a little bit more known, and... 
I you know, I played King of Fighters. I played Persona. I played Blaze Blue for a while. Uh, I've played pretty much every fighting game uh, on a, like like in tournaments that's come out in the past uh, you know five years or so. At least all the two D fighters, and you know now I play Injustice. I like Injustice a lot too. You know, just like you said at the start of the game, I was like, uh, I don't like it. It's dumb. But uh, you know, once you get used to the you know the the game, the skill set that it requires, right. it's uh. You start understanding the game more. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and I like it a lot. Growing pains, really. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, funny enough, I remember meeting Chef for the first time. I, I was a SRK lurker all the time, and I remember he was on the forum. And he, you played, if I recall, Makoto, right? And you would, <laughs> yeah, you would always yeah. post like things, slight things about Makoto. So that's where I knew you from, and then I knew that you were pretty good, decent at Mortal Kombat with Reptile at the time, or Sonya or whoever it was. <laughs> Someone. You know, his revolving door of characters that he's known for, right? Oh, yeah. And, and uh, so I go to Devastation, and and uh, I was talking to Drew Poland, and I saw saw you, and uh, he's like, oh, yeah, that's Wonder Chef, by the way. And I'm like, oh, my God, Wonder Chef? Like, <laughs> that guy? Guy that plays Reptile? I am so screwed if I have to play him. And, of course, I played him. Yeah, it was like like second game in pools or something like that. Yeah, second game in pools. We had this shite match. It was Sonya versus... I remember you told me, you're like, I'm not warmed up. I didn't even know I was coming. <laughs> and I was playing Kano, mm-hmm. who's ball, who was balls then, balls now. Yeah. We just had this shitty little great match that went down to the wire. <laughs> I hit like two ultras or x-rays. Dude, I remember the you, retarded X-ray. You hit the X-ray and you you did all the motions when when you hit me and I was like, oh man, I just got hit by a Kano X-ray. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Always and I remember that was like when I first started showing up to play Mortal Kombat. I was playing Kano and everyone was like, oh my god, he's gonna hit that grab. <laughs> and I always hit it every time because I knew it had the armor and the stupid range. Mm-hmm. I still think like that's a pretty good X-ray. Like all things considered, it's got armor. It's a big, long-reaching grab. You, sometimes you just throw it out there and people don't expect it and it does a lot of damage. Yeah, I, I honestly still get yeah. hit by it sometimes. A lot of the time. Oh, yeah. I, sometimes I just get hit because I want to see the animation. I think it's so cool. <laughs> it is a good one. But yeah, uh, yeah, and I didn't do very well at Devastation. I ended up getting out of pool. I didn't get out of pools. And uh, But yeah, that was the first time I ever met Chef and then we kind of just you know kept in contact. And then you know now we've opened up... Um, you know, the, the scenes between SoCal and AZ, I think, have really opened up. But uh, before we talk more about that, I think it's good to shine a light, I think, on what scenes we're from. So, Chef, why don't you start? Describe kind of your scene. Well, yeah, I'm from, you know, West I'm from, Coast. The, I'm from the, the SoCal scene, part of the West Coast. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, our main our mainstay is Wednesday Night Fights, which, you know, we do stream, I stream every week. And you know we've got good players. We've got Theo, uh, who is a you know the t- uh, top eight at NEC. Or, yeah, NEC and Evo. We have Slayer, who was ninth at NEC, uh, top eight at Evo. Uh, Godspeed was top eight at Evo. Uh, Tyrant, second place at NEC. You know we've got some some good players over here. I think it's one of the stronger scenes around right now, and you know it's a good scene. So that's really uh, where we're from, where I'm from. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot, of, a lot of good representation at Evo. I believe you yourself got like what top sixteen, seventeenth, uh, just 17th. just out of the top sixteen. Right, it's not too bad. Yeah, uh, considering you know how many players there were. Yeah, six hundred approximately. Yeah. Uh, myself, I'm from Arizona, and we congregate at what's the team has the Has House is what the Hazmat House is what they call it. Um, was a really friendly local guy named uh, Haz Ibrahim. Uh, he graciously opens his house up for us to play. Um, he used to host tournaments regularly, so I used to go there a lot for Street Fighter and Soul Calibur and all these other tournaments, Mortal Kombat. Um, recently, you know, he's decided to not hold hold his home for tournaments, but instead he decides uh, every now and again to host them at the Microsoft Store. We had two. We had the one tournament, um, which I won, but I mean. I, he hasn't talked about another one, and I don't really know what's going down with that. But if you want, uh, if you can, uh, he will stream those uh, when he can, and he makes a note of that. And it's usually on Test Your Bite, so you can follow us there. We tend to stream every Tuesday or so, casual sessions. Um, as far as players, um, it's not the usual gang anymore. I mean, the MK gang, it's kind of gone. 
I would say I'm the last holdout. Me and B-Wiz, B-Wiz still plays occasionally. He's on and off sometimes, you know. Uh, he was pretty good last time I played him, though. He plays, like, Grundy and Zod, I think. Yeah, I played his Zod in, uh, in the singles tournament when we were over there last time. His Zod's pretty good. His Zod's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Um, so we got B-Wiz. Uh, we got myself. Uh, I haven't really done much outside of Arizona. I went to Wednesday Night Fights once, and I ended up getting, like, ninth. Um, which is I fine to me, but, you know, it's... It's kind of whatever, so it doesn't really matter. None of the matches were streamed, so, you know. Um, the only one thing I do have of note is that I there was that one tournament we had, the singles tournament we had when you guys came for Dojo Sports, mm-hmm. and I actually beat Slayer in the grand finals. Yep, you beat Slayer with, Superman. Slayer yeah. Superman. And then we had the 5v5 and I actually took out your Zod, was the only person to beat the Zod. Um so, you know, I was kind of like, I was like, you know, maybe I'm decent at this game. Maybe I can continue playing. Because I was, I was kind of emo. Like, I was like, eh, I didn't make Evo. And I don't know if I want to keep playing, but I'll do the Dojo Sports. And that really kind of revived the feeling that I need. I still want to keep playing. Also, special and, uh, shout-outs to you. Were the, <laughs> you took out my Superman in that singles tournament. I was using all Superman that day. And I was like, yeah. I was like oh, he's using Green Lantern. This will be free. Because, you know, back then I was talking about how bad that matchup was. But, uh. You were so good at that matchup; it was ridiculous. And, uh, I will get to Green Lantern. I'm definitely going to get the Green Lantern. I got some things to say about him. All right, but we'll keep that for later. But yeah, so um, some other players we have. Um, there's a really cool guy. His name's Evan. Um, he goes by the name Four by Four Lobo. He's been doing really a lot to keep the scene together. I mean, it's been fragmented and it it's really kind of died down at times. But he's always been consistently playing. He plays Ares. Um, he went to Winston at fights with me as well. Uh, pretty solid Aries, you know, considering it is Aries. You know what I mean? He does what he can. Yeah, he's uh, he's gotten a lot better since the the first time that we went over there. Oh, absolutely. The last time, it's yeah. He's way better. He's he's good, man. And yeah, yeah, I really I respect his dedication a lot. He was the one who was yelling at us like, "Are you guys coming over here or not? Like, just just tell yeah, us." Yeah, now. he's really yeah, yeah. He wants he wants to keep it together. So, mm-hmm. um, he joins. He started playing MK with us late in the game. And I always felt kind of bad because he didn't get to get the glory days of Arizona MK. You know, it was Detroit Ballin and me and Morty Seinfeld and B-Wiz. And uh, he missed out on that. So I always felt kind of bad. But now, he's, you know, he's getting to have that experience of, you know, traveling and doing all that for another game. And he really likes Injustice, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, the other player that usually accompanies us is a guy by the name of Alex. His name is Bad Larry. Uh, he's an animated little fella, to say the least. <laughs> um Plays Martian Manhunter now. He used to play Green Lantern. Uh, pretty solid player. Fun, fun to hang around for sure. Uh, he's a good car trip companion, if if anything. I mean, he keeps it. He keeps it entertaining. Pretty good player too. I don't know if you played a lot uh, when he was there. I, I played but, him a lot the first time we were there, but the the most recent time, I only played a few matches with his Aquaman, which seemed relatively new. So I didn't yeah, play I him too yeah. much this time. Yeah, he's a he's a pretty solid player. Uh, has himself plays Black Adam and Scorpion, pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is uh, he was good in you know every other game I've ever played him in. He had a lot of dedication. He was pretty good in it. Anything he really kind of puts his mind to, he's going to be good. And he just it's kind of hard for him between all the, the you know he's got a family and he's got uh, his job and everything, but he still keeps up and he's still pretty solid. Yeah, man. I mean, his his Scorpion is literally the best Scorpion that I've played so far. You know, so that that dive kick. Can we talk about that dive kick? Oh my god, the dive kick! All right. Dude. So, for those who are listening don't know, uh, the acrobatic characters, which are like, uh, is that what they're called, acrobatic? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, acrobatic characters. That's like Killer Frost, Flash, Scorpion. They have uh, instead of throwing interactables, they dive kick off of them. And for God's sake, with Scorpion and his like lower kind of jump. It's the dumbest thing ever. You could just keep dive kicking and dive kick, and then you want to retaliate and just teleport. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, this is so stupid. Yeah, or he does the he does jump back three, and then he he whiff cancels the jump back three into dive kick. God, so jump at him! It's like, oh my god. Now imagine him doing that with Scorpion before. Oh man, when he was fucked up. God, I hated it so much. Like it's one of those things you're like that's a, that's a shithead tactic that doesn't work it does work like let's not fool ourselves let's not stand on ceremony here 
It's fucked up, the dive kick. I think it only works better with Scorpion, though, because Flash and uh, Frost have those floaty jumps. I think it works best with Scorpion just because he has that great jump back three and the, his lower kind of jump. Yeah. This is my opinion, anyway. And just yeah. the fact that, like, it's so hard to deal with what he's, like, he has so many other options from the air that you can't just always assume he's going to dive kick, too. It's, uh... Right, yeah. Like, he could just do teleport, and then it's like, oh, he gets combo down. Yeah. Um, very stupid, and Haz is a master of finding stupid shit. So, props to Haz. Um, we have a few other players, um, two brothers named Ethan and Phil. Pretty solid players. Um, they played MK as well, when they could, and they've, uh, Ethan was pretty good at, uh, he goes by Mr. E. He actually had a, a pretty nice little run at SCR. He had played Pig in his first match on stream, and did fairly well against him, playing his Reptile at SCR 2013. Mm. Um, he plays Wonder Woman, and he's pretty good. And then Phil's his brother. He plays Grundy. He's pretty good. Yeah, he um, actually beat me in the uh, in the Dota Sports five v five tournament. He beat my oh, yeah, my legs. Yeah, yeah, pretty solid Grundy player. Um, he doesn't get to play as often because he lives in Flagstaff. Uh, for those who don't know, Flagstaff is like northern Arizona. Uh, basically, a place to go uh, to smoke pot and drink. <laughs> and Phil doesn't do any of that. He's a pretty clean guy, and uh, he kind of just goes to school there. Doesn't really have a scene, so on the winter breaks uh, and the summer breaks, he gets to come down and play. And every time he does, he's always impressed me. He's always a pretty good player, but uh, I think he's kind of focusing on KI now. But um, yeah, he actually won the uh, the KI singles tournament that we had up there. The, uh, but, co- but come on, he used glaciers. Does that even count? <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, yes, I'm just, he busted glaciers solidly. Balls. Yeah, glaciers is glaciers is dumb. <laughs> he's annoying. He's one of the most he's annoying really characters I've ever had to fight. I know, right? Yeah. He's just like, God, what, just when I jump back, and just when I think I'm going to attack him, he does that goddamn wake-up splash through the ground, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> um, so there's, you know, they're all, and you know, these guys aren't really known. I mean, we don't get to stream up that often on the sidebar for whatever reason. I don't know if it's like, I don't know what it was, but it was a glitch. Like, we would be on all the time, and no... The sidebar on TYM would never show the Team Hazmat stream, but luckily it's been fixed recently. So That's hopefully cool. you guys, you know, um, drop in from time to time. Um, and just see some of these players, man. They're pretty good. I like the scene that we have now. Uh, we had some players, you know, the guys from Play Mortal Kombat, Morty Seinfeld, Detroit Ballin. Um, those guys are just, you know, they've kind of fallen out of the game. Um, don't really play anymore. We used to have a guy named, um, his name was Chris. And he played Martian Manhunter. Yep, the other Citizen Snips. The other Citizen Snips, right. The one that's not Asian. <laughs> and uh, he was really good. I mean, that guy was really good. Uh, he always got. He always brought the best out of me, which I always appreciated. And I, it's unfortunate that, you know, he just he doesn't have really a lot of time to play anymore. But, uh, yeah, um, Arizona scene, I'm really happy with what we have. And uh, I hope people pay attention more. I hope to try and get to what I can. Um, in fact, I'll plug it now. Uh, Arizona guys will be at Wednesday night fights. Ooh, tomorrow uh, or today or today? Yeah, for, for option selecting listening. this one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're gonna be there. I don't, you know, I'm not really, I'm not gonna make big proclamations. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. But it, it'll be fun. At least we'll stream some casuals. Maybe I don't know. Um, hopefully, we'll show what we can, and uh, you know, we'll just have fun. You know, so just turn, tune in, support the West Coast, support Super Arcade, please. Well, and, uh, you know, like in case you didn't notice, I you know I stream it every week now. I stream pools for Wednesday night fights, so I'll make sure that all the Arizona matches are streamed at least you know ninety percent of them. All right, so yeah. we can guarantee that. But yeah, I mean, you know, just talking about your scene, I, I dude, I love the Arizona scene. I have to say, and I'm sure anybody who's uh, gone over there with us can agree. You know, like Tyrant or Slayer, or Crazy, you know, any of these people, we can all agree. Like Arizona has a, a really cool scene and i'm glad that you guys are kind of being revived right now everything you said about all those players was true they're all great um the citizen snips guy to get an idea of how good he was the in the 5v5 dojo sports league the 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 overall best player was or most successful player was uh p board he went nine or no i'm sorry he went like 11 and one the whole season and his one loss was to citizen snips and it's actually quite the comeback like it's act it's been on Ling Huang BB, whoever that fucking jack off is, <laughs> who makes those like comeback videos, his was actually on one of those. 
Mm-hmm. His comeback with Martian against uh, People Are Superman is incredible. Super hype. Go watch it if you can. Um, yeah, just and and Haz is such a gracious host. I mean, he's housed he's housed the whole Justice League Justice League SoCal team, which is basically most of the West Wednesday night fight scene. Mm-hmm. Housed him in his house. Yeah, I mean, okay, let's think about how many people were over there. There was six of us from our team, and then there was Cole, and then uh, that uh, the Darius. other guy, uh, who? Darius, I think his name is Darius. D- Darius, yeah, something like that. D. He told me to just call him D. Yeah. So that's like that's eight people. And then there was two people from Strawberry Watson, so that's ten people. And then there was the Arizona guys who stayed over. Right, yeah. So that's ridiculous, you know. And, and has his kids and a wife, and he does it all, man. I mean, he's really the glue here, you know. Mm-hmm. We didn't have has, I don't know what, man. Such a gracious, gracious host. I can't, you know, I... I the, I knew him from playing Capcom games, and I kind of reached out to him. I said, can you please put Mortal Kombat, you know, in your next season? I don't care if it's a Sunday game. You know, we just, I would hope, you know, the scene could get this last little bunch before Injustice comes out. And he was like, you know what, no problem. If you guys can show up, I'll stream it. And he did. Mm-hmm. And it was great. So, shout to Haz. Um, truly one of the, you know, just a, he's a guy with a good heart. Yeah, man. Shout-outs to all, everybody in the AZC. Especially has. <laughs> well, now that I've waxed you know emotional about it for a little second, let's get into the good stuff. Um, so one of the first things I want to talk about was um, the whole Dojo Sports thing. We've, we've been mentioning it on and off. Um, Dojo Sports is a thing invented by Jason Cole. It goes by Afro Cole. Really, really amazing super turbo player. Long known for his dolls in play. He runs this thing where it's based on like a 5v5 team sport thing. So you get... You pay in like you pay in five people to play, and then you have five alternates. So ten man team, they play this, they pay this um, entry fee, and you get to play in this tournament that's normally online. But he just loves coming to Arizona so much that he just does it offline too, for injustice. So we put this thing together a long time ago with injustice, where we played the first match back in like what was it August. Uh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a long time ago, and it was fun. It was hype. We all enjoyed mm-hmm. it, and I didn't hear fucking anything for months. Um, I I knew I heard he was going through some personal stuff, which I you know I respect that. I'll leave it all out. But whatever the case, you know, we didn't hear anything for a long time, and all of a sudden on Christmas Eve, he's going, "Hey guys, you know, we're coming this weekend." to finish this. And I'm, you know, my mind is like, I, I could have got the weeks off, you know, I could have got the, you know, the days off, you know, a week ago, mm-hmm. but you know, with a couple days notice, there's no way. And I, I wasn't even able to participate in the five V five. Not, neither was a lot of our team, to be honest, we barely put together a five man team. Yeah. There was a lot of people that I expected, uh, from the first time we actually prepared a lot for you guys. You know, we were, uh, we were, you know, looking back at our old matches and being like, well, you know, well, what if he uses, you know, GL this time? Or, you know, what if he uses someone new? And we went through all this prep, but we ended up, you know, uh, who's, I think, Has, and then uh, Joa. Uh, Joe, yeah. And then, uh, were those the only guys that carried over from the first 5v5 to the second 5v5? Yep. Mm, well. Did I, when was Alex played? Wait, Alex wasn't in the first he, 5v5. Yeah, he wasn't, so... Yeah, yeah, Haz and Joe were the only carryovers. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, and again, the scene changed so much between, like, late August, you know, because everyone was so down on the game, mm-hmm. the post-Evo, <laughs> and uh, it was just a different time, and now we, things have changed, but I mean, still, it was just, and and Cole said that he gave us two weeks notice, I, I'm i sorry, man, that, that didn't happen, I knew three days in advance. I had no way of getting the time off. And that to me kind of soured my whole note, you know, my whole look on the thing overall. I mean, you got to let people know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I can't have three days notice. You know what I mean? I have a job. I, you know, I need to get time off and 
I, he said he's going to fix it. You know, I don't want to go. I want to I blow him up too hard because he's a really nice guy. I mean, he's the nicest guy. He's like has, you know, he's just really accommodating and willing to do whatever it takes. But I don't know. What did you think? I mean, well, let me let me give a little bit of a, like the backstory here. So basically, the idea is that there was there was supposed to be four or five teams. Um, there was the first team. There was one main SoCal team. Which was uh, it was they were called Team Strawberry Watson. I don't get the name, <laughs> but I mean, I, 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 it's something to do with Watson. I guess. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess. But um, it was mainly cons- uh, let's see. The leader was Godspeed, and on that team was Theo Slayer, Tyrant, Awesomeo, because he was also an RDK. Uh, there was Sonic Boom, Brad, Steve, and I think. That's it. But that was a pretty strong team, obviously. And then there was, like, sort of the second stream SoCal team, which is us, which was, uh, we were Justice League SoCal, a.k.a. EGP. And the leader was crazy. We had um, Shori, who disappeared. Red Reaper, crazy, like I said, is a leader. Me, Legends, Dubcakes, keyboard player, and Satsui Yesato. And then, um, so the idea was that there was regional teams. So there was two SoCal teams, because we have a lot of players, a team from NorCal and a team from Arizona and potentially a team from Nevada, from Vegas. But um, the NorCal team, it didn't work out. Uh, I'm not sure what happened up there. So it really ended up just being this three-team thing between us three. And uh, my first match, it was good. It was, at, uh, it was at Super Dojo, at Super Arcade, and it went all smoothly. All of our teammates showed up. It was really easy. But, the, you know, that was obviously a local one. And then... The second match was us versus Arizona, and that Who one was traveled. Really great. Yeah, we, we right. traveled out there. And right. That one was had great. a great time. Yeah, I mean, had notice. I mean, we knew it was coming. We all were ready for it. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, like I said, I heard nothing. I don't know what what was going on with you guys. Well, yeah, let me, let me talk about that. So, I mean, the idea was that every team was going to play each other. And then the two teams that did the best were going to fight in the grand finals. So we, us, Team EGP, had fought. We had fought our the other SoCal team, and we'd fought Arizona. So our matches were done. Now the only thing left was for Arizona to fight Team Strawberry Watson. And uh, since we had such an accommodating venue over in Arizona, which was Haz's house, the idea was that Team Strawberry Watson was going to go over there for a day or two and play their match, you know, just like we had. But, see, the problem with that team is that there are a lot of players that A, can't get time off to do this, or B, like, didn't care about the game as much anymore. So, I mean, that it was just a big problem getting them to all coordinate and want to go over there. So, I mean, every single time, cause, because there was quite a few failed attempts, right, to, to get everything together. Yeah, it's ha- I, we had three or four false calls, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I know Evan told me, uh, Arizona Evan told me that one time that you guys, even like the day before, thought that we were coming. Yeah, it was like, I, I actually, like I had the time off, it was Thursday, and then all of a sudden we're like, sorry guys, can't come. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would be pissed too. But, um, you know, we, my team, we were ready to go every single time, but like for instance, Godspeed... He either couldn't get time off or he didn't want to go. Same thing with Theo. Um, Steve and Brad, I assume something, same thing with them. They they were supposed to show up the last time. They didn't show up last minute. Um, Osmo, same thing. I don't know where Osmo was. But, yeah, I mean, just like they, the, it was really hard to get anybody from that team to go out, which is essentially why it was canceled so many times. Because our team was ready the whole time. So what ended up happening at the end was our team went out and two people from the other SoCal team. And they ended up having to be DQ'd for that match because they just couldn't ever get their people together. And so then us in Arizona played one last grand finals match, which, you know, didn't get too much warning. But, uh, you know, we still all had a good time. I, you know, I was, I was mainly over there just to, you know, play with the Arizona guys again. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, it, and I don't blame the guys. You know, if you have a job, I understand. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, 110%. But, you know, it, I don't think it would have done any harm either just to, you know, kind of show up. I mean, it's fun. I mean, it, it's not about, you know, getting fucking blown up or some shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really care if I got, you know, destroyed or whatever. You know, it was like 15 bucks. I had a good time. I Yeah. It was, you got a good prize. And if you guys don't know, the prize was $1,000 split across the team and a trip to final round with a suite. Yeah. I, w- I would have done it. <laughs> well, at least it was a it was hotel, I think, for final round. I'm not sure if it's the full trip. But, I mean, you know, one way or another, like, they just needed to choose more people that were, like, if you sign up for a team... You need to be committed to playing, you know, the matches. Right, yeah. They just had too many people that weren't, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, shout out to Slayer and Tyrant for showing up both times, even when they didn't get to play their matches, and, you know, being committed. Cooper- I mean, they had a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. You know, it's it's. I'm sure it'll improve for the next season. I mean, Cole's been pretty adamant that there's got to be changes, and he's just doing what he can. So I'm not going to hold it against him too much. Mm-hmm. Um, just we had fun, and so what can you do? You know, things happen. Yeah, I mean, I would, if I was you though, I, I definitely understand how you could feel. You know, somewhat cheated. Like, I mean, you know, all the respect in the world to the guys who we did play this most recent time, but I feel like that wasn't exactly you guys' strongest team to uh, you know to put forth this most recent time. Like, I feel like the first time we definitely did fight close to at least you guys' strongest players and. But uh, yeah, but this time it, it it didn't feel quite the same. Luckily, you know, we did get the good weekend. But right, and I mean, I think you know, it was it was cold together last minute. And I think for last minute they did what they could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it wasn't so, yeah. by the guys that did play. Most yeah, definitely. of course. Yeah, honorable fight. It it was very honestly close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's it's good to have that. It wasn't a shutout. It was close, and we'll just try and improve next time because I think you know I might be down to do it again. Despite mm-hmm. all the issues I had, you know. So, um, you hear a lot of us at the start, we were, you know, we were talking about Dojo Sports and everything. We've been talking about why West Coast needs a voice. I personally have a few reasons. One of the things I think is, uh, when I'm address the elephant in the room, it's not even a fucking elephant anymore. It's a fucking <laughs> woolly mammoth and an elephant's baby demon spawn. <laughs> is that... I understand that Mortal Kombat has its roots in the the, the eastern northeastern coast of the United States. I understand that. That does not have an excuse for the lack of coverage that we get from the staff. Because if you notice, every time there's an ETP redemption or something like that, you know who it's made by? Crazy. Mm-hmm. He is the one that has to make it every time. Now, I, everyone loves Crazy. I mean, he does, he's such a good, you know, he's, he does what he can to promote everything. As does Compton, as does you. But I think it's a little shitty that you, we don't, that you, this coast, you know, we don't get the same, we, we don't get tweets front paged. Mm-hmm. We don't get, and then not that we should, by the way. <laughs> you know, talk about yellow journalism, Jesus Christ, this is piss yellow journalism. And we don't, I mean, we, it just feels like there's not, uh, am I wrong? I mean, no, dude, you're, you're definitely right. I mean, especially about like just the, the amount like East coast players that aren't even relevant anymore. For instance, I have to say it's C junior. He's not relevant anymore. He like, but he gets way more coverage than he really should. I mean, you know, he hasn't been placing at tournaments, you know, but like people, for instance, him or someone like PL or Rio, if they post anything, it's getting front page. But when you have players like Theo, who you know was top eight, at, you know Evo and NEC, you know one of the clearly one of the best injustice players. If he was to say something or post something, it wouldn't be front paged. Or if you know if Tyrant said a little something, it wouldn't be front page. You know, like just it's it's very skewed towards the East Coast. Uh, they pointed it out on KTB. Remember how Theo was a rising star? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, he got top eight at Evo, right? Mm-hmm. He had won about three or four, five Wizard Night fights at the time. Where's the rise? I don't know. Where's the already there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's just, it's like, it's so far behind. I mean, I know that you were a staff member. Like, I don't know if you were a character mod or... I was legit mod. You were legit mod. Staff mod, yeah. And you were no longer legit mod. Yeah. What happened with that? Uh, I 
I couldn't stand some of the some of the biases and some of the decisions made by the staff and like yeah, like you know, for instance, PL made a very, very dramatic thread. You know, that was clearly just about he, he, the entire thing was like it was like oh, it was always oh, when Scorpion came out. He made a thread saying like oh, I had to play a shit tier character like Kung Lao in MK9, but now you guys get to hold it because I can play an OP character. So you all have to hold that. And I was like, that's a really stupid thread. So I closed it. But the th- the the staff was uh, they they decided to reopen it because I guess it was PL and they wanted to see PL post. And I, I didn't agree with that in particular, and there was a few other things, and so I, uh, yeah, I stepped I, down. I, I mean, I really don't blame you. I mean, can, can, I'd like to point out when I made my, you know, quote unquote best threads of Test Your Might 2013, one of the threads I put was a thread that Sao had made. And if you don't know Sao, he's an ungodly fucking troll. I mean, he's, he's troll level 1000. I mean, this dude doesn't make a single serious post anymore. You know, except for now and then. But he, he posted. A list of DLC season two characters for Injustice. Mm-hmm. It was like John. It was like the code has been leaked, and it's Johnny Cage and Red Robin. <laughs> Complete horseshit. It <laughs> it wasn't even like real code. The first three posts are like, "Wow, this is totally fake." It got front paged. Yep. And every other post after that was, "Wow, this got front paged." And then all Storm puts is, yep, I got this at work. Yep, I saw this at work. I feel totally awesome about this. <laughs> and he took it off the front page. But that's what we're dealing with here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, we get, good lord, Peel's in the hospital. Like it's General Hospital. <laughs> and he's the star. Who shot Jay? Who shot PL? We're going to hear next. <laughs> it's just like... By the way, I find it quite amusing that, you know, I like Perfect Legend. I had him on my podcast. He's just a goofy guy. He's just a really weird, out there guy. But for him to say that he, he, he's a purist as far as fighting games go, uh, I must have missed that when he played um, Dead or Alive and Kung Lao and <laughs> Kuma and Scorpion. And Scorpion, definitely I, Scorpion. I must have, Doomsday, I must have missed the boat. <laughs> Where's the purist part? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know. Didn't he once describe his ultimate character as a character with 50-50s that are safe and, quote, hella plus frames? <laughs> and what does he complain about now? Safe 50-50s and injustice. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand the logic. I I, it, I don't know. I Far <laughs> be it for me to compliment on his mindset. Yeah, I don't know. There, I do feel, though, that there are a lot of people that... Uh, do go by that same mantra of you know like I don't even know how to word it like you know oh well I'm a I'm a fighting game purist and I uh, you know what does that even mean fundamentals or something what does that even mean <laughs> I hate that I I'm a fighting game purist you know what I mean I mean I miss the days of down back and then up and then jump off the wall and claw dive I miss those days what the fuck. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I you know, I just missed the days of low rush and a headbutt with ball rock. I mean, those were the good old, back in the day, in the good old days. <laughs> we get to do that. You know, we just we it was all the footsies, right? You know, it was the walk up into throw range and tick throw, and then walk under and do it again and be virtually inescapable. It was the good old days, the purest <laughs> days. It was the days of sure you FADC. Those were the good old days. Mm, yep, and unblockables and. I mean, I mean, look, I. Props to you if you played Street Fighter. It's it's not an easy game to play. It's such a the competition pool is stacked. It's not easy to play. <laughs> uh, well, maybe Street Fighter Four, but I digress. Anyway, <laughs> it it's not easy to play to get into. It's it's a rough game to understand sometimes. That does not make you a god. Or uh, you just uh, now I know everything better than you do. I mean, I played Street Fighter and I'm very happy that I did. But I, I don't think it may like I don't automatically think I should be rolling over everybody because I played Street Fighter. You know what I mean? Like my losses aren't because oh man, the spacing and injustice is shit. It's because I don't know how to yet. Or I don't know how the you know, I haven't I don't know the mechanics of the game yet, so I can't really be good at it. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with God, I played Street Fighter, crouching medium kick auto. No, no, it doesn't. 
Yeah, I feel like there are, like, there's a lot of people that just say, oh, Street Fighter has the ultimate fundamentals, and I feel like, you know, that is one of the most, uh, it's it's a very, uh, not one of the most, but a very, very overrated statement. Like, there are, yeah, yeah, I mean, there are, it has so many problems, but, I mean, every fighting game has problems, and I think people need to come to realize that, is that every fighting game is going to have things that aren't, you know, optimal for oh i'm a i'm a pro fighting game player and i use fundamentals and i you know I, you should only be making smart choices and uh it's just not you know not how fighting games work everything's gonna have problems everything's gonna have balance issues but you know you play the game that you like and you don't s- say that you play one game and that makes you better at the other you know right. just automatically like i know we all hanker for the good old days of cbs2 or whatever but that doesn't make you god God Almighty, okay? Like, sometimes it feels like we need to step back and look at, okay, what are we doing? Maybe our mindset here is just we need to filter out the mindset. Just because it's a fighter on a two-dimensional plane does not mean it's going to be like Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. Or even have, you know, it doesn't have to be. I think that's the other thing. It doesn't have to be. Like, I love ST, but ST is not perfect at all. No one would ever say that. It's fun. It's really awesome. But you, you, if you would tweak some things, you would. Anyone would. About any game, either. like you said, any game. Yep. Pretty much any any two D fighter. Yeah. So to say, like, oh god, man, in Street Fighter, this is how it works, and it's just so much better. I mean, you can have that opinion, but it doesn't make you superior, mm-hmm. or you're thinking more than the other guy. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it isn't even necessarily true. I mean, for instance, I have an argument with um, with Brad and Steve a lot about how, you know, they say, oh, Street Fighter is the ultimate game in fundamentals. Like, and then I, like, or like Brad said to me once, that's the game, that is the game that is all about anti-airs. But honestly, like, for instance, Street Fighter 4, there are more characters in that game that can change their jump arc and bait anti-airs than in pretty much any non-air dashing 2D fighter that I've ever seen. So, like, you know, I get blown up by that a lot because I enter every weekend when I'm in fights. So I'm not that good anymore, but, you know, I, I get blown up by stuff like that a lot. You know, have have guy bait my anti-airs with his elbow drop and then I get blown up for it. So, I mean, people seem to think that all that Street Fighter 4 is is just fireballs and crouching medium kicks and anti-airs for some reason, but it's it's not true at all. And crouching medium kick, that's a good point. It's a very good point to point out. Because a lot of we hear is like, God, Injustice that does not have footsies. Which doesn't make any fucking sense, first of all. <laughs> Every game has footsies. Stop it. It's it's when when they, when people say footsies, they're they're boiling it down to this is what happens when you guys get within mid range of each other. Mm-hmm. Stuff happens. That's footsies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Melee has footsies, okay? Mm-hmm. Things happen when two characters get close to one another. That mind game is, that's what we're talking about. Don't tell me in Injustice that doesn't happen. Like, people get to, I'm, okay, I get people like, oh, we spam specials, whatever, fuck it. Things happen at mid-range, and we get into it. That's footsies. You're, you're, you're encompassing a scenario where we're out playing each other. Yeah, especially with, you know, as, as the game has gone on longer and longer, there's been a more established visual footsies game that you can see among, you know, a lot of the top players, especially oh, ones that use, you know, like characters with good footsies tools. Like, you know, even if you have like Superman versus versus Green Lantern, like that's gonna be a really good footsies fight. Or uh, Nubcakes plays footsies with uh, Batman's traits, which is it's hard to deal with. But you know, if he if he makes one bad dash forward and you can whiff punish it with, uh, you know, like your footsie tool, then the bat goes away, so you win the footsies war. So. There's there's a lot of footsies in the game, a lot more than people, you know, want to believe. Apparently, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you just it's just it's and it's enough with it's got to be the end of the excuses as to why we can't break this game down yet. I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say Injustice is like the deepest fighter that I ever lived because neither honestly neither was MK. But there was a certain line where you knew who was good and you knew who wasn't. And I think people need to be more honest with people who don't see that, you know, that what's good and what's not good. I don't know, man. I just think... 
I just think it needs to. People need to be more honest with who's you know who's who's seeing the forest through the trees and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that the game's gotten to a certain point where a lot of the players who are dedicated have really risen up above or risen up above the players who are just good at fighting games. <coughs> Nub cakes. <laughs> Definitely, man. No, I could talk about Nub cakes all day, man. That guy could. is amazing. His play is like crisp. It's, it's it's beautiful, dude. It's freaking art. It's like dude, oh. Chef was there watching me and Nubcakes play. We were sweating. <laughs> when Batman goes, you're sweating. He meant it. Dude, Nubs he was, is taking his jacket off. I'm like, Jesus Christ! I'm rubbing my forehead. <laughs> like, you, if you guys go back to the Hazmat Archives, the Team Hazmat Archives, and watch that set, you see two very nervous people play. It's <laughs> intense, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Some of the most fun I've ever had playing the game. Yeah, I love playing against Nubcake. So he's he's just oh man, it's just it's always fun playing against him. Even if he he wins, he's just he's so good. He converts off of everything. He's he doesn't do unsafe stuff, you know, unless he he like really takes a risk. Like, it's really calculated, and he's just I don't know, man. He's great. And he's it's really paid off. I mean, when the game first came out, he wasn't he wasn't doing very well. To be honest, he was you know the first few Wednesday night fights he went to, he didn't break top eight. You know, and there was like twenty people, so that's you know not that great. And then, you know, the next time he like he was like, oh, he got seventh or something. And now you look at him, and I mean, there was a Ranbat season for the last Wednesday night fight season. You know, you get points based on your placing. And he right, was, of course. Yeah. He was one number one by a huge margin. Theo number two, but yeah, he he was number one by a huge margin. He just won his third Wednesday night fights last week. You know, beating a ton of good players. He beat me in grand finals. That jerk. <laughs> but no. <it's, laughs> Yeah, dude, he's he's great, and it's it's honestly it's it's not like he uses anything that's like super cheap or you know the, like he just gets away with stuff and people are like oh he shouldn't get away with that, but like he's just a solid player. And his dedication is amazing, and his gameplay is just inspiring in general. To be honest, I think I agree. It's he's a guy who just takes advantage of knowing everything about the game and using it to his full advantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. It's just we I could go we could go on and on, but we'll move on just for the sake of yeah. So now the one big tournament we have coming up is SCR. Typically one of the only really big West Coast tournaments. And there has been a lot of talk about the cap. Mm-hmm. Which is capped at sixty four, I believe. Yeah, for both games. Now I honestly can see Alex Valle's point of view. Because when I look at the Injustice scene, I mean, you guys average, what, 20, 25? Yeah, about that, about 20, probably 20, now. Right. So you average about 20. We could factor in the Northwest and maybe Vegas and Arizona. You'll call maybe another 12 players. Then... I mean, we have to factor in the travel, but do, we don't see a lot of East Coast, as far as Injustice goes. I mean, maybe it's different for the other games. As far as Injustice goes, we don't see a lot of travel for the uh, the other side, mm-hmm. the East Coast, from Atlanta. I mean, at last SCR, I remember Pig was there. 16-Bit was there. Uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, we had, who, who else was there was traveling? Detroit was Detroit, but he was from, you know, Right, Arizona, Arizona guys came over. The Vegas guys yeah. came over. Yep. Uh, NorCal the, came down. NorCal. They're all relatively close. Shujiki Dink, kind of close. Yeah. That was kind of far. I mean, we didn't really get the the other side. Yeah, nobody from nobody from the Northeast at all, I think. Yeah. So, in that respect, how could you blame him for putting 64? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got, you know, fucking a thousand other games. He's got Gundam. <laughs> what is he gonna do? I and he and I think uh, and Vi is a guy of his word. He'll raise the cap if there's interest. I mean, if there's coin to be made, mm-hmm. it's not like he's just gonna go. Oh, God, fuck this money. This these guys want to play. Fuck them. He's not gonna do that. Definitely. Yeah. So I think the drama over it was a little bit overstated. I don't think it's disrespect. I mean. No, it's it's definitely not disrespect. It's it's realistic. Yeah. It's realistic, and you know he he's a flexible guy, like you said. It's just a guideline for now. I mean, you know, in case you guys didn't hear, EGP, uh, you know, Brian Compton and the whole team were there. Friar Bob and all them are they're going to be running and streaming all the 
except for Skull Wars, all the American fighters. So, so MK9, Injustice, and KI. And, you know, he knows that they do a great job. This is the third year in a row that they've done it. It's been completely flawless the past two years. And uh, so, he, you know, he has faith in them. And, you know, we have all our own setups. So I'm sure he's, he's absolutely willing to, you know, increase the cap if, you know, we flood the entrance. So everybody go sign up to SCR. And go. Go. All right. end. It's already up. Go. Mm-hmm. Doesn't stop at you. Good price, too. Yep. Basically... You shouldn't be complaining if you aren't already signed up. Yeah, if you're not going, why do you give a fuck? Yep. If you aren't going, you're the reason why there's a 64-man cap. So you need to shut up. Yeah, I agree. Or show up. I mean, and if you if you weren't there at SCR 2013, how great of a tournament was that? Oh, it was amazing. That was literally top two, if not my top one favorite tournament of all time to watch. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Everybody had a good time. Mm-hmm. Nothing bad about it. I loved it every either step of the way. Every step of the way, man. Compton ran a flawless tournament. Yeah, man. We had, it was it was clean. Lots of setups. Uh, everything was on time. Everything actually ended up St- a stage, kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When, you know, Compton was awesome enough to let us run a bunch of like exhibition matches afterwards. You know, right. Stream. Like uh, remember, you, of course, everybody remembers the uh, the blindfold match between Blind Duggy and Pig. Yeah, that was yeah. great. And then you know it was like sixteen bed versus uh, Chris G. Uh, we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> remember, remember when he beat him? Remember when he beat him? And the first thing he does is go pay up. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that was the best part. Oh, oh man, that was, was a great tournament though. Yeah, great times. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't been to a you know SoCal Regionals, is a fairly cleanly run event. It's run in the great city of Irvine, California. Very sunny, typically. Yeah, if you guys are suffering from all the cold right now, just come out here because today it was kind of warm. So, How about that fucking cold? <laughs> How cold does it have to be where you're like, I can't go outside? <laughs> it's a health hazard. I don't know about that. I'm from SoCal. I know. Like, What do I know? I'm from Arizona. <laughs> I don't even know what a tornado is. I don't know what that is. There's not enough. There's literally no natural disaster that could hit Arizona outside of a flood. And let's be serious, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. The worst that it gets over here is it's so cold that I like, I like almost want to close my window when I go to sleep. Oh, like, God. That's when it's pretty cold over here. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, man. And then I just, I'm like, I'll just put on two blankets. I'm good. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so ridiculous. This weather. <laughs> Sub-Zero is Kai, Kai Lin or whatever his name is. He's doing work. I don't know what the new Sub Zero is called. The other one is B Han, I know, but it's B Han. That's what Han should go by now. GGA B Han. Dude, why does he do that? That would be great. <laughs> he should start playing Sub Zero. Fuck Cyrax. Play Cyber Sub. He's a robot. Kind of the same thing. Yeah, he's got bombs. I'm sure they're just as good. He's got dreads. <laughs> why not? He has a sword, dude. Cyber Sub has a sword. Think about that. That's true. He's a tournament viable lethal killing machine. Um, one of the other things that, uh, speaking of lethal viable killing machines, what the fuck was up with that thread where you were chastised, it appeared to be, for saying Zod Sinestro was 5 5 at one time? Okay, well, yeah, by, by pig. Well, basically. Um, you know, you did play Zod at one time. Yeah, I was I was known as you know one of the top three Zods at a point in time, and um, you know I I played against Legend and Legend's a good Sinestro. You know he's he's good. He I mean he yeah. he may not be a wound cowboy but or wound cowboy but you know who is you know I mean right. you know it's really hard to compare. But you know I, I played against him. I played against some other Sinestros. I did play against Pig online. I played against Pig Sinestro with Zod. I use Zod and. Uh, you know, I none of the, none of the times that I played it, I think like, oh, this is a terrible matchup. You know, I felt like there was there was a lot of opportunities to to pull out my traits and you know make him guess things, and I could potentially fight him in the zoning war. You know, if I didn't have a huge health deficit, and you know, I could I had decent mobility. So there was there was some things. You know, and Pig was Pig was saying, you know, this is like a oh, it's a terrible terrible matchup. You know, it's like unwinnable for Zod. And you know, at one point I said, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, it's like that. I think that there's, you know, Zod sends a very good chance in it. 
I like the matchup. And um, Pig's just kind of a person where if you disagree with his matchup numbers, he, um, he takes it very personally. And he gets very angry about it. Like, for instance, uh, I, I said that Grundy beats Zod. You know? Because I play Tyrant all the time. And he, he played some, some casual set with Tyrant and NEC and he won. And he makes a post and he says, he, he tags me and he's like, he's like, this matchup is 6-4 Zod. Don't ever question me again. And it's like, geez, man, calm down. Okay, you beat him. Congratulations. It's like, just calm down. And then, then you know, like, I haven't played Zod for a really long time. Um, you know, he's, he's got a few shortcomings. He's hype, he's hype as hell. He's a lot of fun. But, you know, I just moved on to different things. And, you know, Pig is still posting things like, you know, like, he posted in that thread, well, why don't, you know, why don't you money match Cowboy when he's at, you know, SCR, like, or not a money match, but, you know, play a first to five with him. Then you'll see how wrong you are about the matchup. And it's like, I'm like, okay, I don't care. I don't care about the matchup. I don't play Zod anymore. Cowboy's an amazing player. I guarantee he'd beat me anyway, no matter what the matchup was. If the matchup was 3-7 in my favor, he'd still probably beat me because he's Cowboy. He's an amazing player, you know. But, um, so I kind of went off on pick because it, it, was, it was getting on my nerves. And then a uh, pig called me a baby or something and said I had problems because, you know, I basically said, you know, stop it. Stop getting so personal. It's just my opinion on a matchup. I don't play this character anymore. And that's basically how it went down. It just seems like, and I, I coined the term forum evangelist. It, <laughs> it, 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 it's so hard to get a word in sometimes. Like I, I was telling, uh, I was talking to someone the other day and I was talking about how my experience is when, they have that Green Lantern matchup thread. Mm-hmm. And Pig went in there and said, you know, Zod, GL, Automatic 3-7, LOL. Mm-hmm. Very pertinent matchup discussion, by the way. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, I agree, I agree, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, my experience has been that I played Wonder Chef in a tournament, and I won the set, and, you know, it was pretty close. I mean, there was things that I did that I think could kind of stop, you know, his getting the trade out. I think I could keep him zoned at his defense amount. You know, just take a look at these matchups. You know, I post the YouTube video. Take a look at these and see what happens. I've had zero responses. <laughs> I haven't got one. No one has been like, oh, acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just like, look, I know we're a couple of nobodies, but this isn't like shit tier fucking playing here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you. I don't know if you remember that match, but I remember like I'm, you know, I'm sniffing, I'm sniffing out the trade with the rocket sometimes. Yeah. You know, I can compete the mid range. I, I think I can do some things here. I mean, you got me. You know, you beat me. Like right. And I'm, I'm not contesting that at all. Event, it might be a bad matchup. I'm just saying, let's not, you know, throw out the three seven like a fucking. It's guaranteed because of his mobility. Mm-hmm. If I have to hear that one more time, I'm fucking <laughs> scream. <laughs> All you ever hear about Green Lantern is, God, he's so good, but his mobility, God. (laughs) (laughs) The mobility. (laughs) And it's like, I I get it that he can't move that well, but doesn't he have tools to circumnavigate the fact that he can't move well? Does he not have a super tech jump fucking Ford 3? Does he not have a rocket in the air? Does he not have one of the fastest walk speeds or the yeah. fastest forward walk speed in the game? Pretty decent yeah. forward walk speed, considering the momentum. Mm-hmm. Does he not have uh, the f- like one of the f- got to be the fastest straight projectile in the game? One of them, yeah. The rocket. Mm-hmm. Not only is it super fast, but super damaging too. Can we talk about the meter burn version? Yeah, meter burn adds like eight percent onto it or something, right? Like, and, and it's it is gonna be, it's instant. I mean, you can't you can't not. It's hard to. It's honestly hard to not trade with it. Mm-hmm. You will win every projectile war. Like I used to, you know, I used to tear about the Batman matchup, and then I'm like, well, let's. Uh, and I thought, well, let me take a look at this rocket more, and then I realized, okay, I was complaining about the zoning. He will never match me if I use the meter burn always rocket. Yeah, if you look at the damages, your your normal rocket does more than his normal batarangs, and your meter burn rocket does more than his meter burn batarangs. And uh, yeah, you just you uh, you win the zoning battle as far as damage yeah. every trade. That's not even considering hidden missiles, which will do the same thing. 
<laughs> is that what you call the rocket power, the overhead? Thing? Yeah, hit miss, hit missile. All right, fair enough. Yeah, so hit missiles will does a lot of damage too. Yeah, ten percent, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and they hit mid, and they're super positive. I mean, there's good. They, you don't. You can just throw them, fucking throw them out. Mm-hmm. So, I'm thinking of all these tools that he has to kind of circumnavigate all the. Oh, he gets zoned out because the mobility. I will. I will give credence to. I think his mobility plays a hand in that. I think he's kind of weak against interactables, mm-hmm. which is what. Which is fine. But the the thing of like, oh, his mobility, God, it's so it's gonna, it's gonna be awful. And I'm like, okay, but okay, like if you're facing cyborg, are you that afraid of machine gun Nova Blast? Because <laughs> eventually he's just gonna go to the corner. Or you're going to get to a distance where you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to rock it one time. Not only probably even up any chip damage he possibly gave, but do more damage than he could ever do. And then they're like, but but then he grapples out. I'm like, lift his ass. Yep. I actually really like that matchup a lot. I'm, I'm one of the few who, people call me crazy, but I think it's Green Lantern advantage. Because if you, you can be patient, you can avoid all the projectiles. You know, just playing it properly, playing it like you're fighting a Skabal in MK9, but not as hard to deal with. And once you get into the corner, like you said, there's not a lot he can do. He can't play footsies with GL. He can't grapple over. He can't jump at him. So you control the match at that point. And you know, GL's walk speed does help a lot in that matchup. There's a lot of characters that they have to try and dash in between incident right, fireballs, yeah. and that doesn't work nearly as well as being able to walk a decent distance. So I, I like that matchup a lot, but I'm. Yeah. You know, and then the other thing I, I think people underrate is that you have this really great 10-frame, super long-range punish. Mm-hmm. So I, and I, I, I question this. I have a lot of Ares experience, given that I play Evan a lot. <laughs> and, the other, and now THTB posted his matchup chart. Oh! And Ares is listed as 5-5, five, five, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Because I'm like, okay, do you understand that when Ares gets to a certain point... If he throws dark energy and it's not meter burned, you can duck and punish with lift mm-hmm. into the vortex setup where you do not a vortex, but you do the if you do the the two two three knockdown and do the rocket on his wake up, he cannot teleport wake up. Gets blown up. Yeah, that's a I, lo- I love that tech. Yeah, very good. Stops all of Aries nonsense. So I'm thinking, okay, so he can't. He obviously cannot compete with you at the mid range. Back one beats all of his ranges. And then if he tries to jump, I mean, Green Lantern's anti-air is around top three in the game. No no getting around it, really. Mm-hmm. Um, the zoning war. It's like, God is zoning. God, the axe. <laughs> that takes nine seconds to recharge. And you can actually beat with the rocket half the time. Yeah, you, just, I, you, you can't trade with the axe. It disappears before it gets to you. Yeah, it disappears. And it's not like it's hard to get the rocket to come out. It's so fast. That's why it's called a rocket. <laughs> and it, I'm like, okay, that, and then what? Like, oh god! If but if you if you make one bad read, I mean, he's in with missile. With and I'm like, okay, but think about this. Not only can you meter burn the missile for instant recovery if you needed to, you, I, it, it's a teleport read. It's not like scorpions where you can just do it. Like, Ares teleport, like, they're like, God, he can run away to the whole screen. I'm like, yeah, with those, you know, 30 frames of recovery, whatever the hell he has on those teleports, he's a great runaway. He's a great runaway. No, he's not. Yeah, I mean, on read, you know, you can you can do so much against that. I mean, another tool that I, I posted about in that thread that I think was underrated in that matchup by the other people was, you know, using Turbine as a movement tool to get in close. I mean... You know, if he starts teleporting away, one turbine, you're gaining more space than you're losing. Right. How's he going to punish that, you know? And he will not punish turbine, by the way. There's nothing he can do. He can't even punish lift. <laughs> like, where does this character have any possible sort to compete against? Like, I'm not going to say it's, like, super bad, but I have no reason to think Ares can even put up, like, a fight that could be considered even. So, I mean, Godsmack setups are pretty decent because, you know, Lift is only one hit or whatever. But still, I mean, whatever. Yeah, it's all things you can, like, learn or react yeah. to or meet a burn yeah. forward three. Or uh, Honestly, I think the problem is teleports are good online. 
Yeah. And most of this matchup data is not cold from offline. And I don't, and I'm not trying to sound like a snob to know people will go ape shit. But it's just not the same. There's a flow of the game that just works differently offline that you get used to. That is not available online. And I'm telling you guys, certain things you think you can't react to, you totally could. Yeah, I mean, there's certain characters, like like Ares, online, top tier, gotta say. Right, down one sword. <laughs> it's over. His swords are more broke than Virgil online. Ridiculous. Downward sword jump too, and this is like you can't interrupt it at all. It's like a block streak. Right, yeah, yeah. It's a block streak. Yeah, and then it's and then and then it's like, okay, Zatanna's three seven out of nowhere. I have never heard of this, but And I'm thinking, okay, so the theory I'm thinking the theory is probably that she throws the rings and it's hard to get it you know, because she can control them, it's hard to get air rocket out. Well here's my thought. Her mid range tools are shit. Mm-hmm. Why do you not walk up? Because let's think about it. When you get the rings are literally minus fucking ten billion on block, unless they're meter burn. They're terrible on block. If you get to mid range, you can punish with lift. Hmm. Like that's what I think. Again, people don't think about that. You can punish a lot of things with lift if you block them at mid range, because it's ten frame insta startup. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the travel time that most things do. Yeah, like so Superman you, uh, sweeping laser. You can punish. Yeah. No. You punish sweep it. Like, yeah, I remember I did the jump over lift. Yeah, that shit, was, that shit blew my mind. Yeah, blew you can mind. do that. So I'm thinking, okay, there's lots of things you can do to circumnavigate her zoning. First, just walk to the mid range. What is she going to do? Teleport backwards? Who cares? He just took, he's a character that takes a lot of patience. And I he feel does. like it's and, not a patience that everybody can yeah. have off the bat. And you can't just, sometimes you can't just go hand with back one three. You can back dash it. Mm-hmm. Luckily, two two three is a good string. And then I had to hear the other day, minigun is is so unsafe. Like, why God? It's so unsafe. Mm. What? Like, yeah, Superman Super could punish it. I remember that. But is I'm like, is there anyone that can punish the minigun on block? No, I don't. I don't think anybody can. I think it's only like minus four or five. It's minus four or five with pushback. Mm-hmm. Who is punishing that? And I'm thinking. And also, is it is it not true? Because I've asked this a lot, and I can't confirm it. Is it true that when you look at frame data, you have to add a frame for impact? I I legit have no idea. I I don't I don't really see that when I test stuff. But I don't know. I could be wrong. Everything could be one frame off, but. Not not like one frame off, but it's just you have to add one frame yeah. for execution. Yeah. So like like if something's minus eleven, you have to punch the ten frame move. Right, because I remember that was the big deal with Aquaman's stab. I I don't think it's necessarily true. I think just the frame data is off slightly because I think you can buffer in the inputs during the block stun. But I don't know. I really don't know. I, yeah. I'm not I can't give you a good answer for that. Right. Either way, I, mean, I don't really have a good answer either. I'm just speculating. Mm-hmm. But any, either way, I'm like you cannot punish that. I, I don't think they designed GL to not have a tool that wasn't safe on block at least one thing. So I, I just it it feels like you know people like to throw out the matchup charts, but then they're not open to discussion. Mm-hmm. So much as like, well, I played this guy, and you know what, I've I just can't beat him. Yeah, th- that goes back to a lot about what I was talking about about pig is. Like I, I'm very open to discussing any matchups, discussing tools, discussing how they, they work with each other, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, when, you know, for instance, Pig, he more than that, he would just be like, "We'll just play Wild Cowboy, play Cowboy, then you'll understand." And like, it's it's very hard to to deal with something like that because, like, yes, I understand Cowboy's a very good player, but you know, I'm a, I'm a very, uh, you know, I I, I'm a thinking player. So I, I would like to talk about the, the exact tools. You know, like, for instance, if you say, oh, well, after this move, you get a free trade set up, and then, you know, but if he does this, then the shackles will catch you out of it, and blah, blah, blah. And I would like to talk about that more, but it seems like people just want to hear numbers right now, you know? Right, the number is the thing that matters. Mm-hmm. God, if it's 5-5, five, five, like, Jesus, everything's different. <laughs> like, uh, and plus, the game is still not even a year old. It's barely, it's still warm. Like, we're not even, I mean, we didn't, 
I mean, this is beating a dead. This is beating a horse that's already rotting because they always talk about it on KTP. But it it really is true. I mean, we need so, we need to start playing the fucking game and not going being four evangelists going online and just being like, God praise the almighty fucking matchup chart. Yeah, I mean, I do think matchups are important, but not so much a number. More Absolutely, so, like I said, it's, you know, tool interactions is, right. is the biggest, biggest thing. I mean, if you can't, if you can't sell me exactly how the zoning game for, like, say, Black Adam versus Superman is, then you probably shouldn't be talking about that matchup. I mean, right. I can tell you every single in and out of that, of what punishes what, what beats what on the read, etc. That's what we should be talking about, as far as how tools interact, not just like, oh, it's six four because because damage. This. Yeah. Because teleport seven three ah, uh, uh. mm-hmm. and uh, like it, it's that's also half the fun is it's so organic. There's so many variables in these things mm-hmm. that that's why it's fun to talk about. But I think the fun's getting taken out of it because we're not talking about the organic part. We're just fucking spinning wheels here. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh, uh, it's just. I mean, fighting I know, games man. are just a thing, a thing that you can't ever put into numbers. If there's one thing, I mean, like I said, I come from strategy games where everything's in numbers. You know, everything is down to like efficient mana costs or like, you yeah. know, different damage variables and everything. And then I think that's part of the reason why I switched to fighting games so much is there is nothing set in stone. There is zero set in stone. You can never say, well, I made the smart choice because no matter what, the opponent can do anything. They can do anything at any given time. So, it's all about, well, I made the choice that I thought would work. It's like, you can't say like, oh, this is, this, let me put this match up into math. Because the math is never going to be right, ever. There's just, it's completely based on personal choices. That's why I like fighting him so much, to be honest. Yeah, remember, remember when Malcolm in Jurassic Park is talking about how math is awesome because chaos theory and dinosaurs don't fit into that theory? <laughs> That's exactly what fighting games are. Fighting games with dinosaurs? Exactly. Watch that scene again. Fucking raptors. Watch that scene again <laughs> where Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum, and Jurassic Park is talking about dinosaurs and math. That's fighting games. I'm blowing minds here. I know I am. <laughs> Somebody out there is like, God, let me get my VHS copy of Jurassic Park. Because we'll you don't have a DVD of Jurassic Park. We'll have to it's find deep. that scene. Exactly. Post and, then li- and then watch Jeff Goldblum's laugh when he's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, and, and like, and, I'm, and then like, I'm like, yeah, ST kind of has standard matchup numbers because they had 20 years of playing the game. Mm-hmm. I could figure out something in 20 years if you gave me time. A monkey could, <laughs> but you know, we don't have 20 years. We have less than a year, so let's slow down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can see people posting matchup charts as like, you know, means for discussion about things, like as a starting line. But, right. But don't ever be that person that's like. Well, this is this matchup number. Just that's it. Like, always be open for discussion. That's you know that's what the forums are about. Right, you'll never grow. Become better players. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, like okay, like I went into playing the Superman, the Superman of SoCal, the SoCal Superman, the SoCal L's, if you will. <laughs> Knowing, I, I think that was a shit matchup pre patch for Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, there's things I can do. And it's only two out of three. So let's make this happen. And I did what I needed to do. I had a plan. And it worked. And that's all you need. You know, I understand, you know, picking multiple characters and it's fun and all that other stuff. But sometimes if you just really kind of think about things and play to what you think you're catering to, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does. For me, it worked out. And it's like, yeah, even though it was shit matchup, I did what I could. I played okay. You played great. <laughs> I played to a, you know, a thing like, you're not standing here. You know, if you're standing here, this is what I can do. I have three different options. Instead of, God, God I'm so outclassed at this range. I need to pick a different character. What am I thinking? It, it, you just can't think that way. I think it's weak. <laughs> which which may or may not be something I'm guilty of, but uh, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> well, I mean... No, you do switch characters a lot. And I think more of it's just kind of... Like, I think it's fun. Like, I've played with a lot of characters before. Mm-hmm. But I, I usually end up settling on one or two. 
And like right now, I'm on Deathstroke. I've gotten kind of settled on Deathstroke. I probably won't be playing any other characters. That's but a- uh, you know, it's just it's just you gotta feel you gotta find who you feel like right with. Because mm-hmm. like the people, the people, the thing about Sinestro, I think the talking point is like I don't think Sin- I think Wound is right because he's a pretty smart guy. I think he's kind of right where he's like I don't think Sinestro's like top five or anything. I think he and he's like I think he's really good, but I think he's just I just connect with him in a way. To where I'm out playing everybody else, mm-hmm. and honestly, I don't think it's arrogant to say that. Well, he might be totally right. I think he did the exact same thing with Shang in MK9. Yeah, and he's always he was always the guy who was like he's in the he might be in the conversation, but I don't think so. Mm-hmm. And was he ever disproven? I don't think he was. I don't. I don't Shang did fine in a game where the most of the mid tier characters could compete against most of the top tier characters, except for you know the exceptions. Mm-hmm. But Shang is an exception. He does fairly well against, you know, the very top of tier characters. So I don't, I mean, I don't think he was wrong. I think, I think people need to, you know, like not listen to him, not listen to him like, God, he's the authority. But think about what he's saying. Because it'll make sense if you think about it. He's not saying he's ungodly and better than everybody else. He's just saying, I'm connecting with this character. It's the way I want to play. I'm not in this limbo of trying to figure out how I want to play like a lot of these other guys are. Mm-hmm. Like if a guy, if a, right? If a guy's playing Batman and all he wants to do is zone and it's not working, but he keeps trying, he's not going to beat Wound, who already knows what to do instinctively. Mm-hmm. Like a guy like Nubcakes, for example, he's another good one. He knows he wants to use the the trait as a footsie tool. He's not, and he knows when to back off, and he's got the life lead, and he's going to zone. He was slaughtering me because all I wanted to do was try to zone it first with Deathstroke, and I'm like, God, this isn't working. I need to do something else. And the matchup flowed and differentiated. As you watch the set, it goes different because I'm trying different things. So again, you can't put it all in one set, and you can't you can't be one dimensional. You got to think other ways. Mm-hmm. This has long been the problem with Deathstroke. Is all we've been hearing from. Resident ass clown M2 Dave. Oh man! Is God his zoning sucks? Blah blah blah. Playing to win will come out of nowhere and say, "I played this character for three weeks. He's garbage." <laughs> you guys are all fools. Teleport seven three. Stop it. I mean, because I I I had this discussion and I think I look at a character like this. He has tools that he can. He's well rounded to the game. I think. Not against the top tier or the bottom tier or whatever. He's well-rounded to the game. He has that kind of weird zoning where he's he's not zoning, but he's counter-zoning because it's fast. Mm-hmm. And projectiles do not trade. He has really long screen coverage that are always two shots, so he's really good against interactables by covering them. You know, beating armor and jumping and doing the air gun shots. Yeah. He has those normals. I call them gatekeeper normals, where they, <laughs> they're long and you just stick them out as the dash is coming, and they flip you back into a combo or full screen. Mm-hmm. He has those. He has a relatively decent forward dash, and he's got really good jump normals. So he's good at doing the in jump stis. You know, people love that fucking work. <laughs> he's really good at doing that. And then he's got pretty good anti-air in a game that, you know, people, like, hear about the anti-airs all the time. His are solid. So every time there's a weakness, you know, in this matchup that he has, you're like, oh well, he has this one thing that can kind of cover it. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's got it solid everything all around. I mean, also his meter burn back and forth threes are very good. Yeah, which to the know, point to the point where I don't think he's going to lose severely super disadvantaged to any any character. He'll lose some matches, no doubt, mm-hmm. but it's not like he's going to just god give up the give up the game, put the controller down, pick a new character. Yeah, I mean, I think personally, what M2 Dave's problem is. Which man, this guy is like barely even with talking about. It. He's such an idiot, but he's irrelevant. He, absolutely irrelevant. But he just wants to. He just wants to shoot projectiles and win. And that was sort of possible when the game and, first came out. But I think, I mean, that Deathstroke is still a good character. He's he, you're not going to just shoot projectiles with him and win, though, unless no. your opponent sucks. He's he's not a zoning character per se, but like you said, the gunshots are great for controlling movement, building meter, uh, controlling you know just airspace and, and just ground space as far as like interactables and stuff like that and like counter zoning. 
And I, th- I think, you know, he does that well. And like you said, just the rest of it, he's not a particularly, like, a full zoning character like some people th- seem to think he is. Yeah. At one time, he could do it because his frame data was dumb. Uh-huh. It that was only... And, like, when they changed it, it kind of felt like, okay, now they're setting things right. Mm-hmm. Maybe they went a little too far or whatever, but his zoning was obviously... The fact that he could zone so well didn't seem right by design. To me, at least. It was too fast. It did too much chip. Something seemed off about it. And when they changed it, I think it was for the the greater good. Mm-hmm. Because he was shitty. He literally shat on characters when the game came out. Yeah, anybody who couldn't dash in between like low shots was yeah. pretty much like just if you were done. Lex, <laughs> ooh, or Harley or something like that. No, forget about it. Done. And now it's like okay, his gun. It, I I compared him to DJ, who I played in Super Turbo. DJ was a character. He had a little bit of everything. He had really good normals. He had a projectile that was serviceable. It wasn't quite as good as Giles, but it was pretty decent for a charge projectile. His mobility wasn't great, but he had this slide that helped him cover space so he could slide in between his projectiles and move after them. He had really good anti-air. He, the only thing he lacked was a decent wake-up game, which, you know, Deathstroke's wake-up game is, like, hilarious. <laughs> and really, the, and, then, and then so DJ is this kind of jack-of-all-trades character, and he fits so well into the game because he can do it all well, and he doesn't lose, like, super hard, only to these super cheap, super cheap top-tier characters. That's how I feel Deathstroke is. Mm-hmm. Where he might not be the best character, sure. But if you're good enough and you're smart enough, and I'm not saying he's like a, a smart man's character or anything like that, not to pump myself up, but if, you're, if you think about enough angles, you can do fine with him. Like, I don't think a teleport is the instant end-all, be-all of Deathstroke. No, definitely not. I mean, honestly, like, his, he, he is fine anywhere. And I mean, it, within that little footsies range, I think that He's he's very very strong there. I mean, I play a lot too with um, Legend, who who feels strongly the same way that we do. That yeah. Deathstroke is a he's a good character. He shouldn't be you know uh, portrayed the way he is in the the community right now. Like there are these weird uh, assumptions about the character. Uh, you know, I mean his his you know, his damage is good too, and he's got some pretty decent fifty fifties that are very hard to you know react to. They're pretty fast. Right. I mean, he can he can do a lot of you know a lot of stuff like. He he has the answers for teleports. I mean, bait any teleport, punish with a standing one, get lots of wall carry, you know, good, pretty good damage, good well, knockdown. Meter burn quick shot, 16% if you read. Yeah, the two. It's pretty good. Rifle, if you, you can trade with a rifle, rifle's 14%. I would trade with that all day. If you're full screen and you're against, you know, a projectile you see coming, why not? Mm-hmm. It's, he's, and to me, he's so much fun because he's because so, he is you know well rounded. Mm-hmm. You can play with some. I think his Okazemi game is one of the coolest in the game, and I think it's very well rounded. He can end in unteckable knockdown, so he can do jump setups. He can end in cross up forward three setups. He can end where he's going to do a jump, and it's very hard to see where it's coming. Yeah, you had some really good uh, ambiguous jump setups. Very, very Street Fighter for like. Right, I showed you that notebook I had. Right. Yeah, the, the book of Slade. Yeah, the book of Slade. That there's so many there's setups in there that I'm working on that I'm like, okay, this is gonna stuff wake ups and shit like that. And he's good at stuffing wake ups. He's got normals that are active for a long time. So that game, when that part of the game becomes relevant, which it will, he's gonna be good at that too. Mm-hmm. Also, he's so, got he's got some pretty good plus frames on his stuff too. Yeah, standing three. So he's four, gonna bait. He's gonna bait back dashes, right? Mm-hmm. And luckily, he has a good back dash. You know, quick fire is pretty good for getting back dashes. Mm-hmm. And so is his sweep, and so is his down two. I mean, he's, again, like, there's so many things about the character you think about, you're like, yeah, he does that pretty good. And it's hard to get over the fact that he doesn't have the greatest, you know, up close, or the you know the greatest zoning or whatever, but you can get past it. Mm-hmm. It just takes a lot of patience. It, it, I think it takes a lot of matchup knowledge, too, because he's not yes, a character, does. like, there are certain characters out there that you can play all your matchups generally the same way, you just need to know specifics. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't talk about that character anymore either. But. We'll talk about him. He's irrelevant. <laughs> Not him too. But Deathstroke, you need to know how to play each matchup. And I think each matchup is ha- going to have to be a different style. Also, not only based on the character, but the player and how they play the matchup. So Right. But how fun is that? Yeah, I know. You play a different kind of matchup every other character and every other player. That's awesome. <laughs> and if, in my notebook, if you saw, like I have not only my punishes for their specials, but how they punish my specials. Yeah. Because you got to know that too. So you can't abuse it. 
I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, I've had so much fun since playing this character. It's it's a way where I felt like Green Lantern was a character who can sometimes Green Lantern his way through some characters. Mm-hmm. Back one will just kind of solve a lot of your problems. <laughs> and his Oki's fucked up, too. Yeah. But, you know, I kind of feel with Deathstroke, he's pretty well-rounded. He's got a lot of different enders. Just a really cool character. And I'm so sad that we have to hear from fucking Dave, who played that character for a month, had a worse debut of a fighting game than fucking the Shockmaster in WCW. He fucking absolutely... I mean, he he lost to a Shazam with Deathstroke. <laughs> Jeez. Remember we had that set? And yeah. I almost got a perfect... Yeah, yeah, I mean... I was I was using Shazam that whole weekend and I was doing really well against everybody. I think I think technically I, I went even or better against everybody, but then I played your Deathstroke and oh man, I was like, okay, I have to switch. <laughs> can't do anything. And it's, I'm just like, okay, so you clearly got bodied because you don't know matchups. You don't play. <laughs> so okay, so obviously we have a starting point. No, he's bad and shit. All right, I mean. Can one tournament be like, God, he's awful, I can never play him again? I don't think it is. And I think it was, the problem is we've let a lot of these guys, playing to wins another one, they get their fucking dick stroke, that death stroke, dick stroke, they get their dick stroked, and they think they know the game. Like, remember we had that, that fucking front page where it was like, oh, the Ohio players' opinions on what changes of the game. Oh, God. That what was... the fuck was that? Now, granted, Perfect Legend was doing very fine at the time. Forever King, same thing. Mm-hmm. But w- why do we stroke the dicks of these players but put them on the front page? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Dave is has proven time and time again to be absolutely relevant in this game. Absolutely relevant. And yet people still, even if it's subconsciously, they put some... They, they put... Like, they think his opinions are right in a weird we way. We got top 8 at Evo one time. Yeah. Not taken away from that, though. Good, great accomplishment. I'll take away from it a little bit. He got the luckiest pulls. He fought, Man. like, four Johnnies and, like, three Katanas, <laughs> like, one Sub-Zero, and then he got top eight. Either way, got top eight at Evo. I won't take it away from him, but I'll say this. That does not give you immediate clout forever. Mm-hmm. And it was a different game. It's a different game, yeah, exactly. So just because you got top eight in one game doesn't mean you, you automatically we got the top eight knowledge in this other game. Because clearly you don't, sir. And I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying, like, calm the fuck down and learn a character and stop being a foreign evangelist. Same with Pete playing to win. It, it, it's the same thing. You guys fucking you got your dick stroked and you think you know the game. Cool. But we don't. It's just a fact. We're not going to know everything about the game. I know you're a doctor. You're fucking the Hank McCoy of the fucking, you know, Mortal Kombat community. But you don't know the game. I'm sorry to say. It, nobody does. There's no way you could possibly learn the ins and outs of every fucking thing. So calm the fuck down. Stop having the fucking nerd rages on the forums. Stop with the fucking, God, I need to hide tech all the time. Stop with the fucking zoning. Teleports equals beat zoning 7-3 by default. Stop with the variable block stun bullshit. Oh, God, that was so bad. I wanted to fucking shoot myself. It was bad. I wanted a low gunshot myself. He, he literally told me that meaties don't give you any more frame advantage on block than a non meaty. I, I didn't know what to say. And then he told me, yeah, if you don't know that, then you, you'll never make it in Street Fighter. I was like, ugh. That's the most basic thing in fighting games. Blew my mind. Dude, when I play, remember when I was explaining how I played the David Serlin tutorials? Meaty is one of the first things you learn in the beginner section. <laughs> where he specifically says you can link some attacks that you normally could not. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just, they need to stop. They just, just, and that's really cool. You can boil down a lot of problems, too. Just stop it. <laughs> God, I'm just. And again, I'm not saying I'm king shit. I'm king hippo. I'm not king shit. I'm just saying, let's figure some stuff out. Let's play. Then we can go ape shit later. I agree, man. I think a lot of people, there's a lot of people on the forums that talk and talk and talk, and they need to just go out and play. And 
stop being so caught up on you know what they think about these matchups and how bad they are for certain characters and how bad these characters are and how good these characters are. Maybe if they just went out and played and kept an open mind, they would end up improving. I mean, you know, like for instance, let's go back to our favorite player, Nubcakes. Nub. Have you ever heard Nubcakes? talk about a matchup ever no he doesn't even like post on the forums he just learns them learns the ins and outs and then you know keeps his mind open for different ways that he can do stuff in those matchups he doesn't go on the forums and say oh well you know superman beats batman you know seven three it's it's impossible and you know he just cakes even have a tym account he does not actually yeah exactly that's what i noticed on something a lot with the west coast guys which i can kind of forgive the lack of like representation do not do a lot of you know forum posting on TYM besides you, and you know like Ducky, and like what's it, what's his name North Cal Nightwing. Yeah, North Cal Joe. Yeah, Nightwing Day Zero. Not a, not a lot of talking. It's just a lot of kind of we just play. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe it has all to do with it. Yeah, I mean, you know in. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to one previous topic slightly. Back in MK days, the East Coast guys would talk a lot because they had a lot of opportunities to show them, you know, prove themselves, and so you know they could potentially back it up through their own tournaments. But right. you know now it's now that West Coast has just as many chances to show you know prove how good we are. It, it, you, you get to see just how good a scene can be without you know being overly dramatic. Except for a few people, maybe myself included. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, and just just by playing, and how how strong the scene can be when you know certain members aren't out on the forums creating a bunch of drama. Maybe me included. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, like you don't see Peaboard going around and posting things that are going to make other people so numbers. Tell. Yeah, you know, like you know, if somebody posts something, it might make somebody in your scene uncomfortable. You know, because you don't quite agree with them, or you don't want to, you don't like people who talk shit, and so maybe you don't want to hang out with them as much when you're, you know, in person, and you know, scenes can kind of fall apart that way. But yeah, I don't know. Just the talk is too much. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I know, I, and I know what you're talking about. Sometimes it gets fucking heated, mm-hmm. and you're like, "No, you fucking idiot! This is how you see it." Blah blah blah. <laughs> but you gotta like, you just you gotta blow it off. It's just blowing off steam, like it would. Okay, br- bring up the almighty Nubcakes again. We're put. He's on such a pedestal right now. <laughs> he, w- when we were done, he was like, "God, if you could block Batman, he got. He has nothing. Like, fucking, I gotta play so hard." <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's trade bats, whatever." <laughs> but yeah, like that's that's it. You just blow off steam. That's what they always talk about at Tony's Diner. That's what they're doing. They don't do it on the forums. <laughs> Because you don't need to, because it just creates bullshit, like variable block stun. Mm-hmm. That should be a punchline. Variable block stun? Yeah, like, I would have won, but, you know, variable block stun. <laughs> just say that every tournament? Right, variable block stun, it's good. It's, it, you know, it's like Rebello. I'm, I'm just Rebello. <laughs> you know, you don't know. <laughs> Rebello of the year. That was Rebello great. Of the year. That was pretty good. But would here's a, here's something to think about. If we could go back, but if we go back in time, would the West Coast have won Rebello of the Year if NEC had gone way different? I don't know, man. I think it might have. Like, it's so funny to think about that. Like, what if what if Ducky? Because you gotta love Ducky, but man, he talks some shit. Oh yeah, he does. What if he went? To, he, he lost in pools. He would have been the greatest rebel of all time. He, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, does Brad not count for that, though? I mean, oh. But did he got biggest blow up of the year, right? He did win biggest blow up of the year. That was a little unfortunate. I mean, things could not have gotten worse for young Bradley. Yeah, but he's honestly, he's handling it very well now. He's. Uh, I think so, too. You got to give him props. Yeah, he people could quit over that, you know, but he's yeah. he's staying strong. He did not Zyfox him. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Can we talk about that though? Like, remember he made that his own blow up thread? Like he he went to some jackass tournament, what was it, Summer Jam? And was like, Yeah, made my own Zyfox blow up thread. 
my Cronus adapter wasn't working, but I'm not gonna make any excuses, you know. <laughs> Coming back strong. And everyone was like, God, stop making excuses. And he was like, name the excuses. And I'm like, the, the fucking Cronus adapter that you mentioned a thousand times? I didn't even have an issue with him until he went around saying that West Coast was free. And like, like uh, he said, like, Nubcakes wasn't even good. Of course, we're talking about Nubcakes more. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, you know, he trash talked West Coast hella. And then I was like, all right, I don't like this guy anymore. I just, I'm like... First of all, you can't make 20-minute tech videos. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> Wonder Chef does it great. Not only does he record it in crisp HD quality, they're 30 seconds at best. <laughs> the shortest, but efficient. Right, and anything he needs to say is done in the description, you know, in the YouTube description. Yeah, I try that's to... The way to... That's the way to do it. I try to have it so that, like, within, like, five seconds, you've got to be seeing the tech, or... Right. Or otherwise, it's like, sometimes I'll watch a video and I'll be like, well, okay, we're 20 seconds in and it's just the character walking back and forth. Like, somebody's talking and I'm like, I'll just wait here. I'll watch exactly. It. So you can't make 20-minute tech videos. Secondly, own up to the shit talk. <laughs> you were literally said you were the Flash of America. Own up to it. You got fucking blown up. So what? It's not the end of the world, really. Yeah, like Look at a, Brad. Exactly, that's exactly what I was about to say. Brad should be hanging from a tree with a samurai sword through his stomach, and his guts are freq- are now fertilizing the ground below the tree. He should, but he's not. Because he doesn't have to, because it's like, oh, I got blown up, so what? Mm-hmm. He's just coming back stronger, you know? It's all he, part of the fun. He didn't make a single excuse, you know, he didn't make any excuses, try to... You know, say, oh, no, I still, I still did fine. I still did fine. You know, I, he's just like, all right, well, next time, you know? Yeah. Which is the best thing you can do. He didn't He didn't pull his iFox. Right. Get, then we need to coin that because it'll drive him nuts. <laughs> pull his iFox. Don't be a iFox, bro. God. Could be worse. Could be Doombox. Dude, he hasn't even been around for a while. Where did he go? Uh, I agree. The, they, they were talking about how he's toned his he's toned his, his ways. I agree. It's fine now. But yeah, but before it, it was a problem. Every yeah. single thread. Oh, Bane. Bane, by the way, has yeah. His. Every thread it would turn into fucking. I can stuff your wake ups, and it's like, ah, who gives a shit? Come on. The worst was when he would post. Uh, he had a bunch of like. Like names for the tech that only he would know, or the other people in the, the like the five oh other people God. in the thread. Like, like it was like he's like, oh, I, I was like, yeah, I probably know a lot of the tech, and he's like, well, do you know what FTCG is or FTCG? I was and like, you're like, I think that's a section. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It sounds like uh, some sort of branch of the government or something. And he's like, oh, sensor forward throw command grab. And I'm like, oh. Oh. What's the tech? He's like, you do a forward throw, and then you do a command grab. And I was like, oh. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I guess is I didn't bad? know about that. Is it bad that I read every post of his in a Bane voice? <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's that's how it should be. <laughs> my command grab beats all your wake-ups. So sorry. It's a Bane forms. Let's talk back and murder. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, box. I kind of want him to come back now, just so I can do that more often. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I would never wish that on the world. I don't know what happened. I actually played him a few times. He he is one of the only people that he did play a lot online, at least. So I did play him a few times. That's I didn't. True. I didn't ever lose to him though. I I did. I do have to say though, one time I did beat him in a bane mirror. The one one of the three times or four times I played him. So. Way to rub fucking salt in the wound. Hey, sorry, I just had to say it once. It has to be known. He felt, I guess. He was really sad about it, though. So then I felt really bad, and now I feel bad about talking about it, but <laughs> it should be known. It should be known. I guess it should. Anyway, what's the next topic? We need to move on to the other topics. Um, apparently Mortal Kombat Trilogy is the thing again. That's out of the blue. It is. Um... I think it's tight, because Mortal Kombat Trilogy is a pretty cool game. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we should hedge our bets and wait for the 100-man MK Trilogy Major, but it's tight nonetheless. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see them 
coming out and playing. I I do sort of wonder why they choose to like support that and not really put their efforts into any like any effort into trying to revitalize MK9 when a lot of them said they liked it. But yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Teach teach their own, I guess. I, I teach hope their own. Successful. I hope that's successful. MK Trilogy's cool. Yeah, pretty cool to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Killer Instinct, another game making the rounds. Ooh, Killer Instinct. Now, I have an Xbox One, and I have Killer Instinct. I think it's a pretty solid game. It has its problems, as we've said every fighting game does. Mm-hmm. But I'm starting to notice that there was a lot of guys that were like, God, ham on the Killer Instinct. They're dropping off. And I'm starting. I'm starting to wonder whether or not, like, I think I th- I like Killer Instinct a lot, but I think a lot of people were gonna play it, and we're thinking like, God, this is God's answer to fighting games. Like Jesus Christ has resurrected in the form of Ki Three. All hail and rejoice. Yeah, there's a lot of the same people who I think were talking about, you know, Street Fighter, about how good Street Fighter was. You know, like, oh, well, Street Fighter, and Street Fighter. You know, this this wouldn't have ever happened. I think a lot of them did the same thing for KI. I mean, is win? I mean, you you will get win kicked the fuck out of, and <laughs> Sabretooth will fuck you up. It's, he's fucked up. See, I mean, there's a lot of bullshit. Yeah, the dash throughs and this. And know, it's so uh, unlike every other fighting game too. Mm-hmm. Like like Killer Instinct is so its own game, which I think is cool. Mm-hmm. But I, it's really. And I think having a 64-man cap is very fair at SCR. Some people were complaining and think it's too high. I'm like, it had 80 at NEC. I mean, that's not bad. Considering it had just come out, and that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, again, you know, like, the caps are just guidelines, really. Yeah. And, and SCR is another. It's also one of those majors where a lot of guys travel for it. That play, like a lot of the top guys in other games are playing Killer Instinct, mm-hmm. and they inevitably have followers that would play. Mm-hmm. So that kind of you all add that together, you got a pretty good combination, I think. Yeah, I, I like Ki. Um, it's fun. It's fun, uh, but you know, obviously, like you said, it has its problems. Yeah. Obviously, I think the biggest problem is that it's on Xbox One. That is a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very hard to... Uh, it's it's not very accessible. Like, you know, yeah. I would probably play it because, you know, I play all fighting games when they come out, but I can't afford it, you know? Can't right, afford yeah. Right now. It sucks. Yeah. And I think... Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to, you know, me and my brother went splits on an Xbox One, but uh, not everybody's in that position. So. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, uh, like numbers. It's really hard to for me to see it continuing as a tournament game. I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad or a good game. Like I said, I like I think it's really fun. And I enter it every time I get the chance to support it and because I have fun. But I mean the day after Injustice came out, we had a ninety man tournament at Wednesday Night Fights. And the day after KI came out, we had an eleven man tournament. And it has never been bigger than that. Every week they get nine or eight people. Last week they had seven. And the game's been out for what? Like two months max? Like this is when a game should be thriving. Like Yeah. Like it's, I it, think also because the model is so different. The free to play, the constant release. Mm-hmm. It's so different than anything we've ever like experienced. Mm-hmm. Obviously gonna have growing pains. And uh, maybe maybe it won't. Like maybe by the time the game's all fleshed out, people will be like, "No, nope, fuck Killer Instinct." Maybe it won't though. Maybe it'll have a big, you know, resurgence back when we you know a lot of characters released and stuff like that. I know for sure I'll be playing it more when Fulgore comes out because I really want to play Fulgore, but he's not out yet. Mm-hmm. But I know he's coming, so I I have you know in the back in the back of my pocket I have Killer Instinct that I want to play you know in March or whatever. Maybe people will thrive to that. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly hope so, because there's a lot of people that put a lot of time into the game. You know, I'd like to see them right. get their, uh, you know, the fruits of their labor. But um, And I don't want to see any game fail. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no one, right. I, I don't think anyone really hates a fighting game enough to, like, God, let it die. Well, there maybe are guys, people. maybe some fighters. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but yeah, like I don't, I don't think anyone wants to see a game fail. So it's like it's not personal, mm-hmm. but you know, maybe, maybe I think also like the hot the hoopla really got crazy for Killer Instinct. Again, like the God's answer to fighting games. Yeah, I mean there was a lot of big names behind it. Maximilian had yeah. a lot to do with that, in my opinion. Yes, Justin and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, Filthy Rich was a part yeah. of it, and et cetera. And the CD Senior was going to run the game, even though he only played Killer Instinct one a long time ago, and he was good at it. But apparently, that meant he was going to run the game. Yeah. You no, know, you know what's funny though is he got that whole front page article and stuff. And when they, uh, I think it was Steve went up to him uh, and played him in tournament, and he was like, "Oh, you're supposed to be good, huh?" And then CD Senior was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't really play that much. I mean, I don't even have a stick yet." It's like what? Why, you know, that's weird. Why did he get that whole front page article when he doesn't even, you know, he's not even claiming to be that good? Gives Kind of gives him a bad name, you know? Now, now that's an interesting thing. Do you think that happens a lot? Because I do, and I feel fucking bad for some guys. <laughs> they get this ridiculous fucking hype injection up their fucking ass for, like, no reason other than the, the guy, they kick somebody's ass. And then, you know, they'll fail to deliver whatever, and it's like, the poor guy. Yeah, people start getting expectations for them. I hate to say it, I feel really bad, but number one case of this, Gamer Blake. How, how he, so for Blake? What? Uh, how so for Blake? I think, like, everyone was, like, remember when he went to MLG or whatever, and it was, like, his first big tournament? And he had that, he had all the, there was a lot of hype. Like, Gabe, Blake Pig was like, man, he's good. He could be top eight. You know, we'll see. And he had that great match with Tyrant. That was unfortunate. Mm-hmm. So, and then it, it kind of went downhill after that. Yeah. He, he, then he, his match to Madsen where he lost, too, was also very close. He yeah. had a pretty good showing overall. Yeah. But, you know, he was he was overhyped. To, yeah. to say. And then the final round, the same thing happened. Oh, man, Blake's going. <laughs> Guys better get ready. And what? Eh. Maybe he won Rebello of the Year that year. <laughs> Maybe he did. I don't know. I, I and I just feel bad for Blake because it's really not his fault. Yeah, no, it's not. You can't say, "Oh, he's a bad player" or whatever. It's just like I think sometimes like these guys get to unfair credence of having to carry this whole fucking thing on their backs. Yeah, yeah, like through other people. And I mean, yeah. no, Blake's definitely a, he's a great player. I mean, you know, ninety nine point nine nine percent of people wouldn't have gotten that close to beating Tyrant. You know, no, 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 not at all. Right, made it that far. Can't really hold it against him, but like. <laughs> All things considered, it's like it's all. It can't be considered anything else than a disappointment, mm-hmm. which sucks. Yeah, who wants to have the? Who wants to have to perform for someone else? <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, and it's it's. I feel bad for guys like Blake. And let me tell. I'm trying to think of names off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm trying to think of someone else who was who was hyped up a lot. Sometimes I feel bad for the UK, but most of the time I don't. Yeah, a lot of times it's them hyping themselves up. <laughs> really, it is. Um, I mean, CD Senior is definitely a, a big case. Yeah, like, yeah, like what I was talking, what was just talking about. Like, he wasn't talking any shit. Mm-hmm. But everyone, remember, Tom was on the fucking Kryptonite Cumfest podcast and was like, "Oh, he's obviously. I mean, he obviously is going to get top three. I mean, he might take it." <laughs> and he get out of pools. Mm-hmm. My voice just raised like eight octaves saying that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know if you've ever met C Senior, but he's a very cool dude. He's extremely cool, extremely humble, never talked shit, extremely nice. One of my favorite players, to be honest, in MK9. He was he was an amazing katana. I really loved his katana, and his scarlet was really good too. And um, he gets hyped up by people a lot considering the fact that he isn't doing it himself, which is really a shame. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely, I think, one of the bigger cases. Like, God, he's a good man here. CD Senior, man. Yeah, here he comes. CD Senior, best Nightwing. You guys aren't ready for CD Senior's Nightwing, man. Oh, yeah, that... I, I felt like, I felt bad for Chris G right before SCR. They talked a little bit about that on KTP. Remember how we just didn't know about Chris G's Kenshi? Oh, yeah. Because he was training with the CD brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, but again, I don't want to blow him up because I, pl- I actually played him at SCR and I, I actually eliminated him. Mm. He was a cool dude. He was just like, yeah, whatever. 
This reptile was really good. Yeah, I, I definitely think his reptile was better than his uh, Kenshi by leagues. His reptile was better than most reptiles. <laughs> like, yeah. But the, like the again, the time to say Chris G wasn't good at MK9 over. <laughs> he was still being like mid level to top players in the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Like he'd be perfect legend at VX. <laughs> Come on, man. I think he, I think he's far outlasted the. Oh, he's just fundamentally his way through the top eight. Yeah, but I do think a lot of that was because he did he did attend so many tournaments that it was almost like, of course, yeah, like he practiced the game just by attending tournaments and playing tournament matches. Like, and, and he's another one of those guys where he's the prodigy, mm-hmm. where he's just naturally good. Yeah, like Justin is like that too, and uh, Ricky Ortiz too. Like they're just those kind of guys that just can play a game and they can break it down really fast. Mm-hmm. So they're automatically at the start of the game. They got to think about them. But yeah, I think uh, poor CD Senior. I think really got the shit end of that stick. Not that he probably cares. <laughs> so like whatever. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully he's get bummed out about that. The Nubcakes is gonna get bummed about about us now. Yeah, now we're gonna overhype him. We, were, we rebelled him so bad. <laughs> God, we're such hypocrites. No, we're I mean, such we're such hippo hypocrites. Jesus, yeah. Ugh. I gotta make a t shirt now. I'm wearing it to Wednesday night fights. Dude, that's that's pretty terrible, dude. I usually make the bad jokes, but you you outdid me. What? That's, that's not even a bad joke. Come on, that's that's a terrible joke. It's like a five out of ten. It's like a three out of ten. Man, but in a good way. In a good way, right? I, it's a three I would out of still ten. Wear a shirt. Yeah, if, it's a three I'm out of ten in a doom box kind of way. <laughs> And, but I hope Kat turns out, you know. Maybe we'll see it. I don't know. Um, one of the other things I forgot that I wanted to talk about was um, Super Arcade. Mm. Um, if you guys haven't been following, and, they, and TYM has front-paged it, but it's going through some tough times. Um, the arcade business has not been profitable in many, many years. Oh, yeah. And a lot of arcades have... Transition into like they have arcade games, but they do other stuff mainly. Super Arcade seems like it was built from the ground up to be like a fighting game mecca. I mean, they have the Japanese sit down style arcade cabinets, they have an old champion edition cabinet, and they hold the tournaments every week, which is tight. Mm -hmm. But it apparently is not that profitable because if you saw that blog post from Watson, it was really sad. Yeah, it was it was depressing to say the it, least. It was, it was hard to read sometimes. I mean, it's just a guy who was just venting his frustration at you know doing his dream job basically, and it's just not working. Yeah, and it makes you feel so bad that like, I mean, we have, and and it's hard as I mean, you kind of feel like okay, but maybe you could like convert into more of like a. And he's already, I mean, he's already talked about it in that other. He had made another blog post where he's talking about adding more you know, dancing type games, adding more of those guitar type games, the ones that really a lot of people that don't play fighting games would play. Yeah, like casual and, friendly games. Right, and maybe adding like a, you know, a barcade type deal mm-hmm. or something like that. And But it's just, it's so sad to read because Super Arcade, like, SoCal scene, like what a great thing it's been for them to have. Wednesday night fights and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, back. to really fully understand the impact of, of- this, I feel like he should have really written more about this on his blog, but I mean, do you know the history of all the different arcades in SoCal? No, I don't. Why don't you run it Okay, down? yes. That, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very interesting. So, I mean, back when I first started playing, there was, I mean, that, you know, that was what, 2009? There was an yeah. abundance of arcades. There was, uh, I mean, I started playing at Japan Arcade, which wasn't even that large of an arcade, but it was, it was in downtown Los Angeles, in the Japanese Town District, and then there was um, Family Fun Arcade, which is a really famous one up in the the valley, which is north more of uh, SoCal, and it has a, had a bunch of famous like Third Strike players and you know Street Fighter players, and you know uh, oh, Marvel Marvel was really big over there, and then there was Denjin, which was also far north. That was a really big arcade, and then we had Arcade Infinity, which was got really famous, really really famous, especially around Street Fighter Four times. That was there. There was um, 
Super Arcade was there. It was a different owner, but it was still an arcade. There was um, Family Arcade, also in like downtown LA. There was a bunch of arcades, right? And slowly over time, you know, like th- that was really where, where Street Fighter Four started. Was all these arcades? You know, people would have all these, you know, these tournaments, and not just Street Fighter Four, but you know, all these other fighting game tournaments, and it was legendary, just legendary. You know, all these different arcades, and one by one, they all started dying. First, Dungeon closed. Dungeon, I think, was famous for Third Strike. I only went once, but you know, Dungeon closed, and then. Arcade Infinity closed, and that was huge. Nobody understood it, you know. Like it's like, well, you know, we we come here every you know every day. Why is it closing? And then Family Fun Arcade closed. That was another huge one. That right there is like three main. FFA, yeah, that yeah, was huge. FFA was absolutely huge. That closed. Uh, Japan Arcade almost closed, and then now it did close just last month. So that closed. Um, what else closed? Super Arcade was going to close, but then Watson bought it out. So, uh, you look at all the arcades in SoCal, almost every single one has closed in the past four years. Or maybe it was even three years. And it, there's, there are basically like three arcades left. One of them is like not even like a real arcade. One of them is just like a, a little just family joint. And then one of them is kind of out of the way. And then the last one really is like Super Arcade. You know, like Little Walnut, California. Yeah, it is the last stand of you know, this this whole era of of fighting games, you know, the, the come to the arcade, meet up, put your coin down, means you're next. You know, a lot of us grew grew up on that you know, that whole system, that whole style, the you know, the, the arcade scene and it is literally like the last stand in SoCal of that. And it's really, you know, scary to hear him talking about closing, too, because, I mean, dude, back in the in the heyday, you look at arcades like Arcade Infinity, everybody knew Arcade Infinity. It seemed invincible. I used to go there multiple times a week, and it just closed, you know? You, you don't realize, like, how easy it is for something like that to, to fall apart. And so, yeah, I mean, Super Arcade is, it's huge. It's a really great community hub, and, you know... It's really sad that it's uh, you know not doing well, but you know we're all supporting it. We go every week. I, I'd like to think that people like me are not the people that he's talking about that don't support it. I'd like to think that I'm part of the the solution. You know, I go every week. I enroll the games to support it. I go to all their Saturday tournaments. Can't make it on Fridays because of work, but you know, it's just yeah, a I mean, bummer. And Mike, Mike is one of the original top players. Mm-hmm. Mike is a legend. Of cap of games. I mean, that, if you look at these dudes' videos, this guy was competing all the way up to third strike, and he fucking hated third strike. <laughs> but damn, did he play the shit out of it? In Street Fighter Four, he's still ridiculous. And Tekken, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, <laughs> the place top three in his own tournaments. Dude is super legit, and you know he's fun. He's a funny guy, and he's this big shit talker, mm-hmm. um, and he's famous for that. But I mean, it, you know, when it comes down to it, he's friendly about his, you know, his. His thing that he's doing, and it and Valle has his back, mm-hmm. and it just is so sad that you know again like the because I know the SoCal and NorCal scene. I mean that that rivalry you know built the backbone of the West Coast for a long time, and without a you know a proper meeting place, it's hard to really keep that going. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if there's another like. I, now, now to be fair, I don't want to sound totally dramatic. If there's a will, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm sure if Super Arcade closed, they'd find the next best thing. Mm-hmm. But you don't want it to because you really can't ask for a better backer than Mike Watson. Really, he he knows he's got his finger on the pulse. Really, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, it's if if Super Arcade died. There would still be another place where we could have Wednesday night fights, and there would still be tournaments and that. But it's it's not just about a tournament venue. It's about you know, like I said, it's the, the last stand for an entire lifestyle, and you know, just like this world that so many people have, and it's dying out super fast. And it's the last chance, you know, to for that to stay alive. Which is, you know, it's part of even if it's not a part of your history, you know, not talking to you, but people in general. Right. It's 
it's a part of the history of what you know the history of your history why you're here why fighting games are here you know why tournaments are run who you know the, the, the players that you play with it's part of all of that it, you know it it's something that shouldn't disappear it's something right. that we can still all learn from yeah you don't get the arcade atmosphere a lot you know, like like going to Hazard's house, it it kind of is like that. I mean, it's not it's not exactly that, but mm-hmm. it's just you, you're in a place, a lot of kind of straight, you know, strangers really. You're competing in this tournament. You know, there's a lot of setups around. You don't, not a lot of people are able to get that. I know I'm in this kind of unique situation, and uh, it really sucks to hear you know the problems that he's going through. Mm-hmm. But as as much as it sucks to hear that, it's super good to hear that he has plans that he hasn't given up. That, you know, he hasn't given up yet. He's got you know he posted that blog post about all the things he plans to do in 2014 if he gets the chance. So support Super Arcade, man. I I we're hoping the Arizona crew is hoping to try and make weekly or uh, monthly Wednesday night fights trips. Yeah, man, that's that's yeah. great. I uh, I actually already I tweeted that out to him. Um Vaya, and he was really happy about that. He he retweeted it that uh, you guys were coming tomorrow. Yeah, because uh, I know Has him and Has are pretty. You know they're friends, and I always I always rock our team Hazmat shirt whenever I go there. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know it's important to support your local thing. If you have a local scene, please support it. Definitely, no reason not to. Um, and it's just West Coast doesn't is I mean East Coast has a you know. Majors, and you can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes <laughs> every fucking weekend. You know, West Coast doesn't really have the same thing. We don't have the same luxury. We have our majors every now and again, but I mean, we only have SCR, NCR, and Northwest majors, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And every once in a while, fucking John Nelson will show his head before they chop it off so he can do one other shady ass tournament. <laughs> Did you ever get paid? No. <laughs> Dude, nobody got paid for that. It was the first time I won major money at a tournament, and then I, it was like my best turn. It was literally my best tournament showing in all of Mortal Kombat Nine. How emo are you? Pretty emo. Pretty emo. Pretty emo. Who's more emo, them, you, or the dudes from VXG? Me, because a lot of the dudes from VXG got there for free. But dude, okay, if I paid for That's VXG, true. if I paid for VXG, I'd be way more emo. Let's be honest. <laughs> Man, VXG. But yeah. uh... Basically, we don't get a lot. Wednesday Night Fights is literally one of the few things that we get weekly basis. So, if you can support it at all, do what you can, man. I'd hate to see it go. I've been there. It's a charming little place, to say the least. You know, very, you know, the the arcade cabinets, you know, you don't really see the Japanese arcade cabinets ever. Mm -hmm. But it's something to see people sit down on one side, the other guy sits down on the other side and play. And uh, just, just a lot of fun. I think, and uh, I would hate to see it go because I really liked. I really enjoyed going there the last time I did. Yeah, and I mean everybody's friendly there too, especially the injustice scene. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can literally just come up and talk to any of us. Right. I I when I went there, I had met some of you guys, mm-hmm. but I didn't know everybody. But the first time, I, as soon as I stepped in there, you know, I saw Frank, uh, Slayer, and EJ, and they were like, and Tyrant, and they were like, "Hey, what's up, man?" Uh, what's going on, the hippo? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Shit, same thing with Chef. Same thing with all those guys. You know, after SCR, you know, we only met that time, but it all clicked. You know, we all were just like, hey, what's going on? Let's let's talk. Let's play. And it was cool. And it's not intimidating at all, really, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're you're with you're with you know people that are like you. So there's no reason really to be intimidated. At the end of the day, I think. Yeah, and I mean, even if, you know, a lot of, the most common misconception I hear is that I say, well, why don't you come up to events? They're like, oh, I just get bodied, but it doesn't even matter. Like, nine, there's 90% of the people that are there, and, you know, 99% of the people that are there aren't going to win. They get bodied. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, there can only be one winner. So, not plus, as- plus, that's part of the thing. Like, you're not going to get better if you don't get bodied. Right, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, just, just try it. Just try it. That's all we're saying. We don't get, we don't have arcades anymore, and we only have the one, and we would really like to keep it if we could. Um, and hopefully, we can make defend the West. 
Can we do that? Defend the West? Uh, <laughs> we should wait to see how well Defend the North does to see if we want to steal their time. I think so. Did you see that topic where it was like, yeah. what defines a major? Uh, no, I, I didn't see that one. That, that was a pretty interesting topic. It was basically a discussion like, why is Defend the North considered a major? Why isn't the Kumite in Tennessee? Um, and I hope I say that right. Yeah. Because you are Japanese, and if not, I'm fucking racist. But <laughs> Kumite in Tennessee. Like okay, good. Kumite in Tennessee, um, which, you know, they're doing that in a Justice Mansion idea, which that can end, that cannot end well. <laughs> Someone's pubes are getting shaved off. Someone's getting balls in the mouth while they sleep. It's not going to end well for anybody. It's not going to end well for them, but it'll end well for everybody else who gets to hear about it or watch That's it. That's right. Like the inevitable KTP about the Kumite in Tennessee mansion. Oh, jeez. The E! True Hollywood story about the <laughs> Injustice Mansion. They should just hire someone to just take videos of everything. Right, like The Hangover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to see it happen. But yeah, they were talking about how that one has all these guys going, you know, Atlanta guys, GGA guys possibly, maybe more. But Defend the North is considered a major when it's really kind of a Northeast event. Um, yeah, there was a whole thread. I don't know if you saw This is what I thought you were talking about originally. There was a thread that said, so is anybody going to Defend the North? And basically everybody in there was like, uh, no, it was like, is anybody traveling to Defend the North? And everybody's like, um, no, I don't think so. I don't know. Like, I literally don't think anybody from out of town is traveling to Defend the North, unless I'm mistaken. Who would then make it a regional? Yeah, I suppose so. I, I think, uh, as far as for me, major to me has always been when the big, the international talent. Now, that's tough with these games because we don't have really international talent. It's easy to see, like, you know, SCR where they get, like, you know, Infiltration and fucking Mago and Choco Blanca and uh, Momochi to show up. That's one thing. Then you could say that's a major because we got the international cup. We don't really have international comp. So it's tough to say for us what's a major. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, it is difficult based on that. But, I mean, it. you know, I, I guess it would just be something that's, you know... I, I usually default to the big ones. That would To, uh, to me, the big ones are CEO, mm -hmm. UFGT, uh -huh. Final Round, mm -hmm. SCR... Mm -hmm. And okay, NEC, NEC, and then Evo's the big the big finale. Yeah, I feel like we're missing something, but I hope not. Maybe Summer Jam. I don't know. Maybe Summer Jam. I don't know. Most of those big e events tend to be pretty decent. Maybe Winter Brawl too. Yeah, or, uh, but I, I would say NEC is generally the big one of the big e events. Yeah, yeah. The maybe the Fall Classic. I'm just saying because it's only been around a year. Yeah, we'll see for that yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, those are generally what I consider like the big events. Yeah. Me, and me. then you have the kind of little, like Frosty Faust teams literally legitimately gets international competition for Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue. Mm. So you could definitely consider that a major. I think actually someone brought that up in the thread. You could consider that a major for the anime games. But just not for every game. Right. So it, it's really, it, and I think there's been a lot of people that talk about maybe there's too many majors. Maybe not enough of a focus on the at-home stuff. Because mm -hmm. really, if you think about it, if you're not cultivating a home scene, what's the point of a major? You're just traveling. You're just traveling to go and maybe probably lose because you don't get experience. Kind of sucks to spend all that money because these these majors aren't cheap. Mm -hmm. Like defend the north is already what like forty five bucks pre reg. Yeah. And I mean, for what? I mean, I mean, a regional with you know the people you play with normally. <laughs> I mean, it kind of sucks, and it's. It, it, I think it was Jaxel, the guy that streams uh, the break. Yeah, it was run guy. Yeah, that was saying, uh, you know, maybe we need to focus more on the local stuff, and maybe not s try and call everything a major and have it like cost fifty five fucking dollars. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the weird things about the Northeast, is that it's kind of like the Northeast and, and SoCal scene are very opposite in the fact that they have very weak locals, you know, like. Eight, eight on the break, they do pretty well. But, like, yeah. you know... Next like, level's dead. Next level's literally dead. Yeah. So, so many of the players out there, they don't go to locals, you know? Yeah, they don't support it, right? Yeah, but they have so many majors that it's almost like those are their locals. Yeah. And then down here in SoCal, we have one major, 
you know, maybe two from Canon NCR. But we have locals and a huge, extremely long, strong local scene. Right. Wednesday night fights. We've got, you know, just we go over to people's houses all the time, etc. I, and I think the, and to me, it's like I think the bubble on you know that New York thing might work for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I think the bubble would burst on that eventually. Because mm-hmm. if you have no locals to train with, you'll just go to majors and the people that are just trying to get into the scene. Is it really worth it to pay sixty bucks to just go, you know, lose? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it maybe is once or twice. You know, like for instance, right, I would say, yeah, like if for SCR, if you're down here in SoCal area and you've never been to a major, go by all means. But you don't want to be like, well, you know, oh, I can go to this major. Well, when's the next time I can play? Oh, the next major, right? It's like that's disappointing. Like, yeah, that is kind of shitty because, and especially these games with their shit online, yeah, which we need to be serious about. It, it's not that good, mm-hmm. especially if you play for, for Killer Instinct. <laughs> you get fucking blue balls. You go back to Injustice. It it kind of sucks, and you know, I don't know. I, I I think you're right. I think I agree with the West Coast version where they have you know really strong weeklies. Because <laughs> I mean, no, I know a lot of it has to do with ven- like I know Next Level has its issues with venue. Mm-hmm. Like, I've heard a lot of things about the power of the building not being great, and it's way out in a different part of New York. And that's all well and good. But still, you know. Yeah, you you got to have some dedication. I mean, people showed that they could make it, you know. They were making it every week. But then they yeah, that's going. true. Yeah. So, clearly it's not like, oh, I just can't make it anymore. It's like, well, everybody stopped choosing to make it, you know. Most of the people, at least. I don't know. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah. It is, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard it's, to have a scene without a good hub, too. You know, like, yeah, you don't have a hub, yeah. yeah the talk- break is, like, the closest thing, right? Yeah, but that's, mm, like, I don't know, it seems like it's far. It's in, like, New Jersey or New something. Jersey, yeah. Yeah, yeah that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then also, like, and this was a long time ago, and he, I don't know if he meant it the way he said it. But Pig was talking about on, maybe it was the Kryptonite podcast, or maybe Glass Sword brought it up on KTP. Like, he doesn't play with the local guys because he feels like he could get a better experience online with better players. And I, that kind of, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, you're fortunate enough to have a local scene. Mm-hmm. Why not? Use that to your advantage. Now, sure. Uh, now, arguably, you could get better caliber players, sure. But still, is it worth? I mean, it's well. Here, here's the way that I see it, which I do have a lot of experience knowing this. Right. Is that even if you okay? So you have an accessible scene to you, even if they're not the best players. No matter what, you know, your your goal is to level up the people that you play with. Because the more that you level them up, the more that the people around them get leveled up, and then the and once everybody else gets leveled up, then you can level up off of them. Right. And, and like the more people the more people that level up, you know, stronger together, the more they can continue to rise up. And that's one thing that I'm really proud of for the SoCal scene is that nobody is excluded. Not a single person is it like, oh, you just ha- you go to Wednesday night fights and we don't invite you to other casuals? No, that doesn't happen here. You know, like everybody's invited to everything, everybody's friends, everybody levels up together. We don't have bad players. Like we have people who aren't as good as, you know, Theo or Slayer, but we don't have bad players because we choose to level up with everybody. We've right, never- and, I, and I'm going to I hate to interrupt ahead. you for a second. Yeah, I hate to interrupt, but the good example I want to bring up this is Red Reaper. Last time I played Red Reaper, he was the only person in the 5v5 that didn't win. I don't think he won a match. Yeah. <laughs> but last time I played him, which was this past Dojo Sports thing, mm-hmm. he was pretty fucking good. Yeah, he got third in the singles tournament. A lot better than I remember. And I don't know if it has to do with, again, playing a character that you're just comfortable with. Mm-hmm. This is for him as Green Arrow. But for whatever the case, and I think it has to do with his... You have to rise to the, you, you have to rise to the local scene, mm-hmm. which is strong. Undoubtedly, Wednesday Night Fights is a fucking strong scene. 
you have to, to survive, you have to evolve. Mm-hmm. And that's, a, to me, a perfect example. Yeah, I mean, it's, but it's, you know, it's not just, you know, us having good players and forcing other good players, other lower level players to level up. It's, you know, we, we cultivate lower level players, you know, yeah. not taking credit for people being good, but we work, everybody works with everybody in the scene. And right, it's all, you're all exchanging information, you're all, uh, you know, thinking about matchups and shit like that. Yeah, we, you know, we, we all work together and it, you know. It levels up our lower level players so that we, you know, I don't want to be like that, but you know, the higher players level up the lower level players so that the high level players can level up off of them even more. Right. And, and it gets to the point where you level them up to the point where they can help others level up to level themselves up, and it just it grows into something that becomes automatic, so that everybody's automatically leveling up, and you can level up off of them, and it doesn't have to be like, well, I have to go and search out, you know, high level players that are no names, and you know, I know I can get good matchup experience off of them because you know that your scene is going to be good enough to give you matchup experience because right. you've cultivated a strong scene. I mean, that's just, you know, it's how it works, and a lot of scenes yeah. don't get to see that, but I'm really proud of the SoCal scene. Right. For that. And I don't, and if I quoted Pig out of context, I apologize. That's just the way he said it. I don't know if he meant it that way. So I don't want it to seem like I'm blowing him up too much for it. Mm-hmm. But that's just, I, I, like, I would argue, I would never be as good as I, I would never be anywhere near where I am if I wasn't for the people I played with locally. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if they're not as good as me. There's things I learned. I learned the game because I played with them. Mm-hmm. It's something I could never get anywhere else. So, again, it's stress the importance if you have a local scene. Please, please support it. Yeah, and I mean, I I do understand the value of playing online. I I do play online quite a bit. I haven't as much recently, but right. I mean, I can understand you can learn matchups from really good players and get good experience. But it's not something that you can cultivate. Not something that can grow upon itself, it's just you're going to get limited to those matchups. I mean, you know, say I played Rebello and Cowboy online. Well, I'm going to get really good at, like, four matchups. But then that's it. And right. then I might go have to have... And then I'm going to go fight them at tournament, and they're going to know how I play. <coughs> Sorry. So, it's different from cultivating your own players to become good enough, you know, I think. Yeah, I agree. You got a good point. Um... I think the point we're just trying to make eventually is that with, with your local scene, there's things that you might take for granted. They're not easy to see at first because you really only know. I only know this because I've experienced it. And like, for example, when I played Mortal Kombat, I was fucking shit at it. You know, you played me, you know, at Devastation 2011 <laughs> okay. or whatever. You, you did almost beat me with Kano, though. <laughs> I don't know. Good point. Anyways, I wasn't very good. I had to learn the game. I only had to play... The only people I had to play were Morty, Sal, Detroit, B-Wiz, and Asamo. Now, that's quite... The, you know, that's quite the competition. Like, I have to learn fast to be able to keep up with these guys at all. And eventually, I did. It took me a little bit, but you, I eventually saw, like, even if it's only a couple guys, there's so much that I learned just playing with those guys that it was worth... Never playing. I never played online in Mortal Kombat, and I think I did. Eventually, ended up doing you know okay for having never played online. Sure, I had you know I'd get fucked up by matchup knowledge here or there, but the experience I had was enough to make me pretty good at the game, and I think I wouldn't trade that really for anything. Yeah, support your local scene. That's the Absolutely. bottom line. Yeah. And uh, as we wrap up here, I think one of the things that's really good about this podcast is we are talking from places where we have. You know, somewhat healthy local scene in my case, really healthy local scene in Chef's case. Mm-hmm. And it's a perspective that we don't get a lot of, besides GGA and Atlanta, pretty much. Um, because New York, I mean, I mean, Northeast even at all as a scene, it's kind of weird, like we said. it's Their majors are their practices, mm-hmm. and that kind of is weird sometimes. Um, but yeah, we just, we thought we'd start this podcast because we, we felt a little we have a chip on our shoulder <laughs> and we felt under that's an understatement felt underrepresented felt like we had something to say and we want to bring a different perspective. So, um, people who have been listening, you know, thanks a lot. Um, this is rough. You know, it's just our first time doing this. We're kind of really shooting the shit. We're hoping to add more people. Yep. Guess yeah. would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> And I think, and I think one of the things we would like to do is try and keep it pretty strictly West Coast. Which is not to say 
would yeah. never do anything else, but that's the point. It's it's representing the place that doesn't get a lot their chance to speak their piece. Yeah, especially since you know West Coast has done so well recently that like, and it just seems like it gets no voice. Exactly. Right. And there's got to be interest. Mm-hmm. It's got to be. So yeah. So um, this has been the West Coast War Zone podcast. Um, I'm King Hippo. And I'm Wonder Chef. And it's been really fun talking with you. Um, we'll do it again. We uh, It might be weekly. I'm not sure yet on the whole schedule, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. And we'll be doing what we can. We hope to uh, uh, bring the West Coast back in the spotlight. <laughs>